We've been recording for a while. And here we go. Do you have those days when you like flip through the dial and you just don't know what to listen to? That's right. Here at the Podcast Network, we say, fuck the radio. Listen to a fucking podcast already. This is the podcast I get. Welcome to the Dixon Cider Show. I am Red Hot. I am Er. I'm Ice. And Six. And you're supposed to say we're putting our dicks into this week's circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was my turn this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You give him the you give him the floor. He does what he wants. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's true. That's true. We're trying something new this year, and we're just kind of opening the show. Everyone does it different. And today we also have a guest. We also have. I'm Holly Golightly. And I'm Jim Ballant. All right. And. Uh, <laughs> You and the noise is stuck. <laughs> and ice starts. <laughs> These are residents' uh, uh, sound effects. Sound effect. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Holly and Jim are, uh, what would you call yourselves? I don't want to screw it up. Tell us who you are. <laughs> We're comic book uh, creators and publishers. All right. And who do you create for? Well, ourselves now. Um, I started out with Archie Comics. Well, I didn't start out, but I guess the most popular company would be Archie Comics. I did... Uh, um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I did uh, Josie and the Pussycats, and all the other Archie characters, and Jim? Uh, I worked with DC Comics for several years, and then in the year 2000, Holly and I teamed up and started Broadstart Comics. Wow, and you guys more than teamed up, right? You guys are married. Yeah. Teamed <laughs> 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 up. <laughs> but um, so I'm gonna start from the left, our left, and, and Holly, you said you started working with Archie Comics. No. Um, yeah. How yeah. did where? How did you get involved with that type of stuff? What did you uh, do to get to that? Well, all the way from like, why did I start comics, or why did I start yeah. working with Archie? Yeah. Well, I, I read comics since I can remember. I mean, I think an early, early, early memory. I was like five years old, and I discovered the Barbarella comic hard. Mm -hmm cover one uh, by a French uh, creator artist and I was just like wow this is awesome and then from there you know Richie Rich and uh, Little Hot Stuff, the Archies, uh, Crip, was it the Vault? The Vault of Horror? The Crip, yeah and like a lot of like spooky ones I would find in my summer camp that would really scare the patubers out of me, but <laughs> I loved it. Um, and then as a teenager, I got into Star Wars, Red Sonja, Howard the Duck, Conan, ElfQuest, uh, and Spider-Woman. And, and those were my heroes. I loved them. And I was a, a big Star Wars comic book nerd in high school. <laughs> so, That's good. And, and I played Dungeons and Dragons, but I was an only child. It was very frustrating. Yeah, I just recently started purchasing Star Wars comics for my oldest son. He's he's a very big Lego Star Wars fan. Mm. You know, he loves that type of stuff. And he's only eleven. Well, he's gonna be eleven next month. But he uh, he just loves him to death. He just actually picked up um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think he bought the uh, the book, the graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And he just re he read it in like three days. He's like, all right, I want to get the next one. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how uh, many different uh, genres they they have for the comic book field and uh, graphic novels and stuff like that, and where they're actually taking and adapting them into movies now, yeah. which is kind of neat. 
And you wouldn't be able to think of they do that like 25 years ago, no way. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice, isn't it? You know, it's growing up as adults. 25 years ago, Howard the Duck was. Was yeah, that a, was made in a, a movie. Barbarella. Yeah, I saw Jane Fonda. I was going to ask you about that. That was Jane Fonda movie that they adapted that from he a comic book. It quite a bit. Yeah. In, in the comic book, Barbarella was very smart and self-sufficient and um, very strong. Mm -hmm. And they really, really dumbed her down for the movie. Mm -hmm. But she still wore awesome outfits. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Now, you know, in Archie Comics, I mean, they, they kind of come off as the, the cleaner comic out there. I mean, other than like a Disney, like Donald the Duck and stuff like that. But yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid, that was kind of like a clean comic. It wasn't really, there was like morals to the story, right? Well, I think there were, in yeah. a way, I think. I never really read a whole lot of Archie, though, but I, I'm familiar with it. I mean, mm -hmm. every time you look through the, the Sunday paper when I was growing up, that's the first thing you'd see was Archie or, or Garfield or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. or BC. You know, all those type of comics and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. yeah, he's still he got a lot of staying power. Obviously, the Archie, Archie. Uh, well, I heard that they were going to be. It's a great franchise, though. I, I thought they they canceled the the comic, but I thought I heard something about something coming back, like a TV show or something was getting run off of it. Do you know anything about that? I do not. I left uh, the company in two thousand and four, so that was put in the back of your mirror then. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're so busy. We have our own company since the year 2000. So I, I you yeah. know, I was uh, doing um, 13 issues a year plus, helping Jim with his book, Terror Witch the Black Rose, mm -hmm. and all the things on on our business end too. So you know, it's just like I don't have the energy or the the brain space to care about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Star Wars or Disney, you know, yeah. uh, and that's more of a hobby, fun thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it actually, in the past, when I was reading Archie's, there were some quite controversial stories and, and story arcs and even one splash page covers um, in the 70s and 60s. So I was warned not to do that when I was <laughs> drawing them. <laughs> Whatevs. But, uh, you know, it, you, you grow up and they're part of your family, so I was very, very happy to like be drawing Josie and the Pussycats and Sabrina. They, they, they were like old friends, and mm -hmm. so it, it was very fulfilling. Okay. Now, oh. you, you talk about like Archie and, and different comics and your, your comics as well. Is the, when, the, when it comes to the business, there isn't that many people really involved, is there? I mean, In your comics? Yeah, like for you guys, it's kind of just you two, and then you guys have another another individual you work with, right? Your layer. I think what, what our flatter, our flatter Randy. Um, you probably. But is, there, but is there a copyright that you got to watch though too with some of those characters that you do? I mean, depending on whether you go more, you know, a traditional character, or do you go buy it? I mean, I mean, I don't know, you know, some of the characters I'm talking about. Well, we There's don't work with any characters but our own now. Oh, okay, okay. So we have okay. our own later own. Jim has Terror Witch Black Rose. I have a title called School Bites. Okay. Harry Potter meets um, Anne Rice, uh, directed by John Hughes. Oh, you know? wow. that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of inspiration on your end. Yeah. Like, um, Xena meets Batman for HBO. Okay. Oh, all right. Wow. That's uh, pretty interesting. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, this is the imagery here. Though. You oh, can see the Archie-esque okay. type look to it, you know. Right, right. You know the the, the style that you draw it still okay. has that Archie look to it. That you know the round. Okay. I drew that kind of before I worked for Archie too. Well, yeah, I'm not sure what uh, illustration they're looking. At. Yeah, because we have so many different styles. You know, yeah, I was looking at your main with three. the Holly G school bites where they're sucking on the three straws. Oh yeah, that was a direct. Uh, influence from my Archie days. Yeah. It's called Three on a Milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I called it. <laughs> Soda. Now, I, you guys have been drawing your whole lives? Pretty much, yes. But uh, professionally, uh, no. I actually started in the theater and then I taught, um, I, I was in the theater as a child, a uh, teenager. Then um, I taught pre-kindergarten as a semi-adult. Uh, then I quit teaching and became a fashion designer and had my own company 
till I was around 28, 29, and I quit that and then went into comics professionally. Oh, I mean, you have a pretty, uh, pretty diverse uh, uh, resume then. I mean, you, you know, theater to, you know, doing comic books and everything else. I mean, that's uh, pretty, pretty yeah. impressive. Uh, Baked cakes in the shape of different characters to support my desire to be a comic book artist, and I was a magician's assistant too. Oh wow! <laughs> that's, a, that's a resume. <laughs> well, and then she had to add another one on top. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the the wonderful Bert, Bert, what's his name? You see that movie yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 about a magician. It's got Steve yeah. Carroll. Is it Steve Carroll and uh, oh, that one. Steve Buscemi? I have never yeah. seen that one. Uh, it's very funny. Okay. <laughs> that one kind of went under my radar there. Yeah. I knew it was out, but I uh, never got around to seeing it. You're not a, a Netflix whore like me, then. <laughs> well, got it. I'm not on it like you are. <laughs> and then Jim says uh, he used to work for DC Comics as, as well, correct? A long time ago in DC Comics? That's where you yeah. started? Polly or yeah, myself? Yeah. Or oh. yourself. Uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, a long time ago, I I started out as a uh, a background inker actually. Uh, once I graduated from the the Joe Kubert School of Art, uh, the first work I picked up was to be a a background inker, and then from there uh, I worked on both Marvel and, and DC books, and then from there you know I, you'd submit your samples, and uh, eventually I, I was picked up. Uh, uh, by DC to uh, pencil some one shots here and there, and then eventually uh, was put on the uh, Catwoman book for uh, several years. And, and it seems like uh, that was like almost like an inter introductory level uh, when you do like a background anchor. Anchor that's basically how you get in your foot in the door, basically for doing comic books. I must well, see. I mean, we're talking way back. <laughs> I mean, uh, we were. I'm talking about uh, I'd say 1984. Okay. Uh, when I graduated from uh, the, the Kubert School. Okay. And uh, back then, uh, background anchors or assistants really didn't get any credits inside the, the comic book. So we were kind of like ghosting whoever we were working with at the time. Oh. And I was working with uh, Jim Sinnott and also uh, Kim DeMolder, who were you know, both fantastic guys, great anchors. And, uh, you know, so for a few years I was working you know, under their shadow and, and learning from them, and, and that was a, a great education. Uh, you, you do get, you know, you're taught in school, but once you're out on the road and you meet uh, the professionals who are working every day, you pick up so much uh, more information. Yeah. And, and then what's great is there was a time when I'm hearing it. Oh, uh, we have nothing on our end. Oh, okay. So uh, what happens is, you know, I would finish the illustrations and bring in the pages to Marvel or DC and get to meet the editors. And, uh, you know, I would also show some of my, uh, my pencil work at the same time. And then, like I said, eventually they would uh, put me on a, a book, uh, either a one-shot, whether it was a... Uh, uh, actually, the first illustration, or the, the first story I illustrated was a, a Sergeant Rock story that was in the back, uh, way back when. And then uh, from there, I guess the, the yeah, the, the monthly book was uh, definitely Catwoman. Yeah. That's awesome. I like Catwoman. <laughs> it seems like uh, they've really changed up that character as well throughout the years yeah, as well. I think yeah. image-wise it's changed yeah. quite a bit. I don't, know, I don't know if they just changed for the times. I don't know if that's uh, what they what they do. Is they Everybody else has their own little take on it, and they, they try to make it their own. I don't know if that's where people go with that at all for like certain characters or they have to stay with a certain set rule on certain things or not. Well, with, with the, the publishers, Marvel or DC, well, what happens is um, you'll get the assignment and they'll either tell you redesign this character or uh, you have some liberties with this character. Mm -hmm. For example, with uh, when, when you guys are familiar with the character Dark Claw, uh -huh. yeah, I've heard of it, I've, but I, I no, I'm not uh, too familiar with that one. <clears throat> Villain? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, it was a uh, when Marvel and DC combined forces and created the Amalgam series, and they decided to combine uh, Batman and Wolverine. Oh. And so they called them Dark Claw, and that was when they they called me up and they said, uh, you know, design the character. And of course, you know, through every design stage, it goes through you know several approvals, you know, from uh, the editors and 
who's ever you know uh, above the editors at the time. Yeah. So it's it's rarely that uh, you know just one artist could just say this is the way it is, and this is the way I'm going to draw it. Uh, there is a lot of freedom in my day, especially there was a lot of freedom in sort of redesigning you know certain looks of certain you know iconic characters, and sometimes the first design I would come up with was the the one they went with. Other times they would say tweak this or tweak that. Mm. But um, you know, answering your question, yeah, I mean, there's many years that go by, uh, trends come and go, and uh, the the big publishers, you know, definitely have to keep an eye on what's being what's current, what what's what's popular, and then they sort of kind of tweak their characters to sort of be, uh, I guess, uh, more interesting to the public at the time. All right. So, Oh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I hope, hey, like a lot of the, a lot of the way that uh, things things will change eventually throughout the, the course of uh, uh, the time. You know, you know, like back when uh, Captain America first started out. You know, obviously it was back in the '40s, so obviously you couldn't do basically everything they did at that time nowadays because I mean it's not in the forties anymore. Well, it's that's just like every character though. Every character has changed from the first concept to today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. character has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean they Batman. have tweaked it to better or, you know, it's it's always changed. Yeah. I don't know. Robin's outfit still kind of femmy. <laughs> well they did actually have him where he was uh, almost like Nightwing. They almost made him look kind of more of a, a yeah. badass kind of in yeah, a way. But, and see and I'm not I'm not, not like completely versed in like comic book storylines and how one character becomes this character, you know, because I know they've had, like, Black Spider-Man and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. They change the ethnicity of the individual because the individual becomes, you know, is, is different. Is that the... the no, um, he wasn't the... He was, his outfit was black. He was <laughs> literally black. No, no. <laughs> No, no. There's actually uh, there was a black Spider-Man. I got oh, to play the black spider Yeah. Oh, okay. Black individual. Oh. He's 13 years old? Uh, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not completely versed in it because I'm naive to the whole comic world when it comes to those storylines because I don't pay attention to them. Well, it's such a big big uh, it's, it's such a big uh, genre too, yeah. so it's kind of hard to probably follow everything unless you're a die die hard. Well, character, character changes also affect uh, the movies as well. I mean, look at James Bond when he first came out compared mm -hmm. to what he is now. So. You know, as time goes on, different ways of creating or recreating the character, you know, crap up. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and then you want you want, you get these people or individuals that want to put their 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 take on it. You know, the people that are above that are making the rules or you know that are paying for the job to get done. You know, they're like, well, I want to see it this way, or I don't want to see this look this way. You mm -hmm. know? Well, that's just like though, like in The Walking Dead, the the cartoons or, or the uh, the comic book series of Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, comparing to what they're doing on AMC. Now, the Deanna, that's part of, she's supposed to be like the mayor of Alexandria, where they're at now in this mm -hmm. season. Um, according to the comic book, she is actually a man in the comic book, not a woman. Mm -hmm. And they decided when they did the film that they wanted a woman and not a man. So, Which I mean, is... they can change, you know, I mean, they you know they can change that in movies a lot easier mm -hmm. than because they need to get the storyline straight and to the point, quicker. We're in a comic book. You could stretch it out a little longer, like any book, even like a book. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. You could, you know, you can, you could put more detail in a book than you can in a movie. So they got to do. Oh, yeah. Well, know, it's always different from comic books always, to the movies, always. and you always have the group or of people that to a bitch movie. because it's different. Well, those those people are they follow the, leaders, they follow the, you know? a lot of times if they followed the comic book, the movie would be. Seven hours long. Yeah. And well, got that's a you know, to a like I'm a frame. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I, I've listened to the audio books like eleven times now. Yeah, and that's your other that one too. <laughs> Slytherin for life. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I noticed you know with the movies when they went and they they made all those movies were really good movies. You know, mm -hmm. they, there's a lot left out from the stories because you're right, you can't put all of it into yeah. the movie. Yeah, but they should have kept Peeves. Yes, Peeves would have been awesome. I, I was heartbroken, and now that uh, Rick Mayhew has passed over, you know, <laughs> unless they use some sort of CGI, I feel like the real Peeves is, is really a ghost now. So yes. we need to yep. all put our hands on the table. <laughs> all for him. Well, you know, and the, it, it was... Back. The, yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. What they did with the movies, though, is they kept with the basic storyline of Harry and then dealing with Voldemort. 
you know, right. they, they didn't throw in all of the other house elves that were involved, which you know, I, I wish there would have been more, um, as well as, you know, just all the other experiences that happen that aren't part of the real story. Mm -hmm. They just add to the story, which, yeah. you know, and you got to do that. And they were good movies, you know, but the audio books or the books are just even ten times better. If you haven't read them or listened to them, I, I highly recommend it. That ain't going to happen. Of course, you don't read. Uh, <laughs> well, are you got ears. You I can read. You can I just don't read books, okay? <laughs> you don't have to read. Just listen to them. You have two choices. You have the American one mm -hmm. uh, with Jim Dale, or you have the British one with Stephen Fry. That's why, when I, that's why when I was a kid, when I liked comic books, it was so much easier. I didn't have to read them. I could just look at the pictures and I knew it, what was going on. I mean, I didn't have to read them. Well, you basically had to read them. Wow, you can't even read but, a comic book. But that's, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> Put your foot in your mouth. See, uh, no, I am not. <laughs> See, my wife is an avid book reader, and uh, we went on a trip to go watch a friend do an MMA fight, and there was a bookstore my wife wanted to stop in. They had comic books and just regular novels and stuff like that. You'd swear to God we'd walk into a church or something because it felt like you could see a skin burn in. He was like, "Why? No, it was like it was like you're like a devil or something going oh, to church. Cool. It, was it was like, like a yeah. vampire stepping outside. Ah, you know, <laughs> rip that page up. It was like the Make worst. Fire. It was like Get the worst half <laughs> hour of his life. You, you know? would have been you would have been one of those. It's not, a, it's not one of my big things. Yeah. You know, okay, I'm I'm old enough. I don't need to worry about books. I hadn't yeah. had to worry about books since I was in high school or whatever it was <laughs> that I went to. Well, uh, did you have like a? Bad I don't need it. Did you get like a bad paper cut or something? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jesus, no. No. he's got this thing against books. I just don't. Devil. You know, I mean, people people think that. Ice the Nazi I'm naughty book because I don't read a book. I was just book. thinking that. Uh, Ice the Nazi book burner. Little bonfire oh, throwing everything God. in there. Okay. Every book's he had other media. Yeah. That's oh, all. Oh, what were you saying, Holly? Say that again. I'm sorry, we missed it. A form of dyslexia, possibly. Do you not enjoy? No, no, I don't have to. No, uh, I just. I'm not you, so it's very frustrating for me to read. It, it, it either does or it doesn't happen. I get very stressed out. So for me to listen to a book is a lot more enjoyable. I didn't know they had a British version. Of yes. Harry Potter books. Yeah, I'm Harry Potter books for Christmas, I think. Oh my birthday. It's it's just that I've never been interested in sitting down and curling up with a good book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean that's just not me. No, you know, I mean I've never done it. I mean it's just, I mean. So what kind of comics? Do you I'm not even a really kid? big movie buff, but I do like Pop certain things. You know, I mean, I mean. <laughs> what, what kind of what kind of comics <laughs> did you look at? You didn't read them, obviously. What, which ones did you look at when you were a kid? <laughs> Archie. Archie. Yeah, yeah. No. a lot of the Archie ones, uh, the Batman ones, um, some of the Superman. Um, uh, so there's such a wide you know, variety nowadays. You don't have to look at our comics. Uh, yeah. I might have to. <laughs> you have to. You she, um, if I'm not mistaken, Holly, don't you model for Jim on most of the character bases that he has? Yes. I do. I love the red hair, though. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. Because that's my favorite color anyway is red. Yeah. Because I like the wall, the hair. I mean, that's an orange Thank wall. you. Well, it looks red to me. <laughs> we did our, our pitchy color Oh. <laughs> so, Jim, what did you when you were a kid? What inspired you to go to school to be a comic artist or an artist in general? Yeah, uh, it was directly to be a comic book artist. Uh, I, I loved uh, reading the Spider-Man books, the Batman books, uh, the, the TV show. Growing up, the, the Spider-Man was was fantastic. And when I found out that there was a school. Uh, in New Jersey that was uh, run by uh, Joe Kubert and that just focused on storytelling and comic book art. Uh, I thought, uh, oh, that's the place for me. And, and I spent three years there, and it was fantastic, you know, working with Joe Kubert. Well, not working with Joe Kubert. He was uh, one of the teachers there, and uh, it was amazing. And still is. It seems like, I mean, you guys are, your business seems to be growing more and more. You guys have a lot of followers. Um, you can see it all over Facebook and the internet. It's it's amazing to think that you're inspiring or you're doing something to someone's life like you guys are doing. It's it's awesome. Yeah. I, I I draw a lot too, but I just I've never been into the comic stuff. I can never get into drawing comics. Um, I think it's because of just the way I think. I mean, I, more of a, yeah, you're hotwired different than a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, Irv and I we we were like really good artists when we were younger. I mean, I don't know to say good, but we, we really got in the he's drawing. Than you, well, he's, he's, <laughs> took, he's took, he's took his, uh, his, his skill to a higher level than what I, I, I kind of, I think I let it fall to the wayside a little bit. But when I was in like, 
junior high and high school, I was drawing all the time, and now since you know I'm married now, and I really don't see yeah, you but you, your career. Yeah, you lost your knack, that's uh, for sure. Well, your life career went to different. You lost direction. your knack for reading. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyway, I well, no, I still them. I still enjoy the art and everything else, and if I have a chance and I can draw something, I'll sit down and draw it. But uh, it's. Like his his caliber right now is totally surpassed what I can do right now. Yeah, well, That's what I think. Their books are amazing anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to divert it from me to you guys. So. <laughs> it's fine. You know, it is beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do you guys game at all? What was that? Do you game? Yes, game, oh, yeah, game, we, yeah. we game yeah. a lot. P PS3, Xbox, we you know do a lot of that type of gaming. What are you playing now? A lot of uh, like. Uh, I like to do some of like the really dark, uh, like uh, survival horror type stuff. Or I like to do. He's like, into zombies. Well, no, I like uh, that game that just came out. It was uh, called um, Evil Within. Evil Within. I was just gonna ask you if you played that. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of gives you that little jump scare. You kind of you you want to see what's in the next next room, but <laughs> you kind of ease back a little bit because you don't know what's gonna jump out at you. I like that type of stuff, and you know the first person shooters type stuff like that. We enjoy. You know, you like the puzzle, like the, you know, there, what was that one? Where it kind of makes you, well, like God of War, they kind of make you use your brain to kind of figure out puzzles and things like that. You know, I enjoy you know, Portal? games. Portal? You know, I've never actually played that. My son played it. I've never got around to playing that one myself. Destiny, we play a lot. Yeah, that's more like a role-playing type as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just, you know, I never played World of Warcraft. I, I think it'd be nice, but like I told my wife, I'd get so addicted to it, I would never get off the damn computer. So. It's almost like a second life. Yeah, <laughs> some people take that to another level. I mean, yeah. there's people that actually... My daughter does. Yeah. I mean, there, I heard there's... Everybody that they deal with. I heard there's people that take, um, uh, what is it, they, they, they hire people to to do certain things for them. So they'll go out and get, like, money or gain money for them or something like that. So they can just sit at home and game all day long? Well, they, while they're working, they're, they got people oh. doing their shit for them, and yeah. people actually get paid for it. I mean, it's weird. I don't, I don't know anything about it because I don't play it. So, well, am I, why am I even talking? I'm about? not even getting to that <laughs> level, old. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to the art. I wanted to talk to Jim about just the art, and you guys, when you guys do your comics, you're basically drawing every panel, you're inking it, um, but you said you have a flattener that does the color. Is that the case? Yeah. Uh, well, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. Yeah, yeah. uh, Yes, uh, it starts with, well, with Tara, Witch of the Black Rose, I'll start with the concept. I'll do uh, rough thumbnails, breakdowns of all the pages, and then I'll go into pencils. I'll do the inks uh, all by hand, not digitally. And then when it comes to uh, the covers, I'll do the same thing, but I will color the covers on Photoshop. For the interiors, I then hand over the finished pages, the ink pages, to Holly, She'll scan them in and send them to our, fl our flatter, Randy. And uh, she'll drop down sort of the basic colors, flat color. And she'll ask whether it's uh, you know, a night scene, a day scene. So it'll give us uh, basically a starting point to, to start from uh, coloring-wise. Uh, and then you know, it'll go back to Holly, so then you can pick it up from there. And then uh, I take the flat colors and I check with Jim to make sure that they're the palette that he wants, and then I render them so they become three-dimensional and add all the textures in. And then after that, he checks them and then makes notes about what special effects he wants to see, like lightning or magic, and then that's done uh, on another layer in Photoshop. And so then we flatten that out, and um, Jim makes like a little black and white book and puts the rules where he wants all the dialogue, and then we drop in the uh, dialogue, the balloons, the sound effects, and that happens. So typically <laughs> from beginning to end, how long does that normally take you guys to get? Is, is that just one panel, or is that an entire comic book? No, it's just a whole comic book. Okay. Oh, and that's why it's, that's why it's a whole book, because it's a book that he wants to produce... Uh, what you see on the shelves. We've done it once, I think, a monthly thing, and it was just way too much work, and uh, we just were not happy with the results, so we decided to stay at uh, bi monthly. It seems uh, pretty rushed if uh, you guys are like put on like a time frame like that. I mean, it seems like they want you to get something done like quicker than what you guys feel comfortable at doing. 
Well, we are the production. Oh, I, I thought maybe that you guys are like uh, contracted sometimes to do certain things for other individuals oh, no, as well. No, they are so oh, okay. their own. Okay. Everything they do is theirs. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. We, and there's no pressure. Oh, hold on, he's talking. Oh, he's talking. No, it's okay. What we do, uh, we do that work as well as the, the broad sort of uh, you know, work that we work on. Um, it, does, it does take us that long. Uh, yeah, the, the pressure, there's a, there is, you know, time will always give you pressure if, depending on, you know, if it's longer or shorter. But um, I don't think we've ever felt, um, I don't know. The only pressure we get is actually from our readers who say, oh, we want it like weekly or we want it uh, monthly. Oh, okay. We would love to do that if, if we figured out a way of, uh, you know, us two doing all the artwork ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we do do freelance work, um, we make sure it fits into our schedule. Like Jim just did a... a, a what was that? Uh, that's yeah. on your end. Must be getting the feedback. Yeah, it's, okay. it's your microphone and speaker are working at the same time. Just give it one second. Did it go away? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. <laughs> um, Jim just did a cover for DC Comics, did an alternate uh, Catwoman cover that came out in February. Right, it was a variant uh, issue 39. Uh, so, yeah, uh, basically the point is, you know, our work comes first, broadsword comic work comes first because we feel we have a big responsibility for our readers who supported us for uh, 15 years. So for us to sort of disappear to go do uh, like a fun project, I think it's sort of uh, very disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, so when we do take on another work from outside, we look at our schedules, we we'll see where we can fit it in, and uh, most of the time we can, and if we can't, we actually have to say no. And there's been like great progress that we're, we're just dying to do, but we just said we just can't take it on this year. Yeah. Now, was there a project that you've worked on in the past that was your like pinnacle of like I've wanted to do this my whole life? <laughs> it's funny because I, I think every I was gonna say every month, but every uh, every other month I think is sort of like a highlight for me. I mean, as a kid, you, you're growing up and you're loving Spider-Man and Batman, and you're drawing Batman or Spider-Man in your bedroom, and then you realize, oh my God. You know, I could be paid for this. I could have a career. Mm -hmm. uh, you grow up and, and you do that as your career. And uh, so every, every time you see your book on the stands, uh, to me, it's just like this jolt of like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And that little kid inside you, like, never dies. And even though I'm not on a monthly book from, say, Marvel or DC, I still have that little kid inside me that gets excited if I see a Spider-Man drawing or or the new Spider-Man movie. And, and I think as long as that spark is still alive in, in me or any artist, uh, I think they'll always be uh, producing or doing what they love. Yeah. And I think everybody's got that little kid inside that never wants to die either. They always want to keep uh, keep staying with that uh, that that young Peter Pan type uh, mentality. You never want to oh, no. you know, never want to grow. Toys R Us kid. Yeah. yeah. You know when I yeah. Toys R Us kid. <laughs> yeah, you still can't read. <laughs> I, I, catch, I catch myself going down. I catch my, like if I'm at like Walmart or something like that. I'll catch myself occasionally just wander down the toy aisle and Are see what they me? have. Every time I walk in, I, I go in there and check it out. You know there. and you know, I'm I'm always so fascinated with the artwork on you know the packaging. I said, "Wow, this is cool." I mean, Jim could probably could have drawn that. I didn't know that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they did a Barbie Catwoman, and and they used your art for the packaging on that. Oh, really? Uh, yes, that was a while ago, but I didn't draw that specifically for Barbie. They just used some of my artwork to put on on the actual uh, packaging. It's still amazing, though, to think. I mean, you you got to be uh, awestruck every time you you walk oh, in yeah. and see stuff like that. I, I mean, would be. I would be. I mean, I, <laughs> I I get a kick just when my artwork shows up in a, a small town newspaper here mm -hmm. in the university. It's like ah, you, you get excited. <laughs> you get excited. <laughs> it's like you, you hit that point in your life. It's like, well, I've I've made it. You know, this is this is cool. I'm doing what I love and. And hopefully this will keep keep going on and on and on until you know they can't do it anymore. So right, that's a torch on. Right, I always think of it as uh, like the holy grail. Like, and I always think in, in everybody's life, 
there is the Holy Grail that you need for. And then once you get that Grail, you notice there's another Holy Grail, or mm -hmm. it's moved. So like you, you keep going, and, and, you, and the hero's journey keeps going on. You, you know, like you said, if once you're dead, that's it. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I think once you stop reaching for that Grail, or once that little boy or that little little child inside you uh, becomes silent, I think that's when things are over. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think as soon as you know something excites you, and this this goes beyond just uh, art. I mean, it goes to people who love sports. Uh, yeah. They they wake up every morning and they, they just want to know the, the latest uh, stats on their favorite sports player because there's something inside them that's yeah, right. excited. And same thing with art with me. Is it, I, I don't think I'd be happy doing anything else if it, if it wasn't art at this particular time in my life. Yeah, I think I get worried when uh, the first thing you're thinking about is what type of Ben Gay I'm picking up in the morning, or, <laughs> or, or whatever, you know. As long as you're still of acting like a little to, kid. Of all the things you know, I just to don't, I just don't want to, you know, get to that point where you wake up in the morning going, man, I can't wait to pick up the, you know, the stock market report. I'm feeling, I'm feeling go little, down and pick yeah. up some depends. You know, I don't, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I always want to get up in the morning and have a good time, you know, with my son. You know, have that bonding time. You, with you him tell and me, I. man. You get to that point when you wake up in the morning and say. Which depends I should always bear. borrow. Yours. Let me know that. <laughs> I, hopefully, I'll be around uh, by I that time. <laughs> they'll have like little superheroes on your depends, and it'll be great. Exactly. <laughs> superheroes like pull-ups. Right? Well, speaking, yeah. of, speaking of six, and I used to take our <laughs> Spider-Man and Superman underwear and put them over our pajamas. The, the underoos they used yeah. to have when you were younger. We'd yeah, we put them over our pajamas and put ski masks on and act like superheroes. <laughs> we would have the cape and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. And you stopped. Know? Uh, right now, well, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe now yeah, since you be sparked the idea, maybe we'll have to do think, it again. I think a trip to the store for some underoos. Are... I can only see you from the neck down, so for all I know, you got them on right now. <laughs> Damn it, you caught me. <laughs> okay, again. Yeah, I'm the one that sits nude at the table. That's why I sit over oh, here. God. <laughs> if you're nude, I'm never going to be here. I'm out of here. <laughs> I walk in and you're sitting your butt ass naked. I I'm out. Ass, like, exactly. I'm with you. I'll be out Just the door. Just because we brought up the Betazoid thing earlier yeah, doesn't you mean you got to do it. <laughs> act out your fantasy in front That's of everybody. Awesome. <laughs> now, when you guys, you guys do everything yourself. So, like I was saying, the business is small. We really don't have many people that kind of are working with you. Um, how do you guys get out and do, you know, you guys, what do you do to get your work out there? I mean, was it because you worked with DC and, and, and Archie Comics and stuff like that, that you had the connections to get out, or do you guys go attend Comic Cons? Do you, what do you, what do you guys do to get your, your work out and about to the, to the viewer? Um, well, we do have good word of mouth. Uh, a lot of people who did read Catwoman or uh, Sabrina, mainly I think Catwoman, followed us to go through the mix. Uh, but we, we keep picking up new readers. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, um, and I chat with everyone. Jim and I are very available to our readers uh, because we are readers too. Or yeah. We were readers and we are um, pop culture geeks and we're no different. So it, it's really a meeting of the geek mind, you know? Yeah. And we embrace that, and they embrace us back. And I think with that energy, um, our readership grows, and we respect that. So mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, what cause one of your best one of your best advertisements. So out there is word of mouth, anyway. I mean, because I was I used to be a business owner, and I mean, word of mouth is probably your best way to get your product, your company, or whatever out there, because you know. Everybody talks. I mean, you know, pretty much everybody talks. Unless you're, yeah, as long as it's a but positive I mean, but word you know, well, but yeah. do I, well, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, because I've known it from experience, so you know, I mean, you sure there's got to be some, you know, other marketing features that you have to do, you know, like going to Comic Con or something like that. But again, when you're there, you're still talking to mm -hmm. people and in 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 uh, letting them know who you are and what you do, yeah. and and that's how it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. And uh, I mean, because that's always the best resource. For anything of, of we'll, promoting a business, anyway. We'll be at San Diego Comic Con this year. Our booth is 1715. We've been doing it for 
like 20 years mm -hmm. uh, with our booth, but we've been attending San Diego Comic Con for 25, 30 years. You know? Oh, yeah. See, that's something that I would love to do once, a Comic -Con? once yeah. in my life is go to a Comic-Con. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I've seen it on TV, and I've seen, you know, now that we've talked to some of the other people in this business, you know, and more and more about it, I would just love to go to one and, and just so take, much, in yeah. that, you know, take in that. And you, know. you have a chance to rub elbows with a couple celebrities, too. Get that there, wouldn't bother you know? me to do that either, you know. No, that would be kind of neat. <laughs> <Take> $50 <laughs> for an yeah. 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 You Get to meet you guys and go talk to you guys in the flesh. That would be cool. San Diego is pretty far from where you guys are, are home based, right? I mean, you guys are home based in Pennsylvania. Uh huh. Yeah, we slept all the way there. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, talking about famous people, I usually um, it, it could, I could go the gambit from keeping it cool to actual ugly, ugly crying. It's yeah. <laughs> it is. You didn't cry when you met Gaston, did you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't a Comic Con. Yeah. No. I, I, this was a, a writer. I don't know if you know. His name was Alan Dean Foster. His name is Alan Dean Foster. He wrote uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. If you are a big Star Wars fan, you will know that. Splinter of the Mind's Eye, yep. Um, All right. Yep, so, books. He also wrote, wrote the, the novelization of Alien, a lot of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, very big science fiction writer. He was sort of my J.K. Rawlings when I was a teenager. Yeah. And that's when I did read, was when I was a teenager. And we were at San Diego, and we were going to our booth, and we were passing through Sideshow Collectibles, which is pretty much what our home looks like. Um, and we were looking at one of the statues, and I saw this gentleman also looking, and I saw his badge. Mm -hmm. And it said, Alan Foster. And all of a sudden, you know, you get a little warm. My eyes were getting a little wet. And I went, <laughs> are you Alan Dean Foster? And he went, oh, I said, excuse me. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I don't work here. And I went, yeah, I know. Are you Alan Dean Foster? And he went, why, yes. And it was just like, boo <laughs> 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 Crying. And, you, and I am a very colorful kind of larger than life person so it's just like Jessica Rabbit just starts bawling at you. <laughs> and I was telling him how much I loved him and what his characters meant to me and the guy was terrified. Just oh. terrified. So, like, oh, where he kind of wanted like slink away terrified you mean? <laughs> really? Oh. He, he looked scared. Yes, he was. <laughs> But they got, he just has to realize too, like anybody that writes or, or actor or whatever, they got to realize that they do have a fan base out there. And I know a lot of people don't mean to probably freak out or whatever, but when you finally do meet that person, it's probably like once in a lifetime you probably ever get to see them. They got to realize like, hey, you know, they appreciate my work. And I think they probably take that as a grain of salt, saying, okay, yeah, you know, you probably didn't mean to get freaked out. Everyone has different personalities. Like it happens to us. You know, yeah. people feel that. Emotion when they read the, the art, you know, especially Jim's comic, and we've had a lot of young women come, and they've gone through some very medical, um, um, scary situations, and they end up crying. Usually, I end up crying with them. Yeah. You know, it yeah. just becomes a really big weird cry fest. But you know, we appreciate it, and and. Uh, I don't scare too easy either. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all tears of joy, though. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're tears of joy. So I think sometimes they're tears of, of acceptance. You know, it was a, a young woman came to Jim, and, and she had gone through some cancer. And uh, reading the book helped her. You know, it gave her... Um, kind of inspiration. A, yeah, inspiration and an oasis of fantasy, mm -hmm. confidence... Kind of get away from uh, what she was feeling and get her out of reality yeah. and get her into somewhere else besides. Or she can get away for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, also to give her a, uh, she said reading the book actually helped her um, have a better positive body image about herself. Yeah. Oh, sure. That was very emotional. And you know, when you when you touch uh, readers, it's amazing. I always say uh, that's probably the best part about comic book. Uh, conventions is you, you get to meet the people who actually you know read your your comic book and mm -hmm. you know every day Holly and I are sort of well, well, well yeah we're in a room with four walls and we don't know where our our comic book our baby goes out to 
and we're always amazed when we meet them face to face, and, and they tell us these incredible stories. Right, and, right. And you're just like blown away. You know, there's soldiers reading it on the front lines. There's, you know, women reading it. There's uh, lawyers, and you know, it's just it's amazing where your work goes and, and how uh, it touches people. And the same thing with your guys, with your podcast. When people listen to it, you you give them uh, a lot of entertainment. And, oh yeah, and we try, we try, <laughs> we try to do our best. Yeah, we, yeah we, it, it's it's the same way. We really haven't had anybody come up to us yet, and we really don't we don't get. Oh yeah, we did. We had Lana Turner come up to us. Go oh, ahead, you yeah. guys are. Uh, I don't know if you ever forget too. that, will you? We never. I will never forget that. We should should ask you guys familiar with who Lana Turner would be. You know, yeah. she's a musical comedian. Oh. She's married to uh, a comedian. His name is Ralphie May. Um, well, anyway, okay. well, if you don't know, it's okay. You don't it's have, okay. Not everybody knows who they are, but they are great people, and they do their own podcast too, called the Perfect Ten Podcast. But um, we were. I, I got drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I got really drunk one night, and I I, ge I geeked out on because I'm a big Ralphie man, Ralphie May fan. So I got a little tipsy one night, got a little courageous, and decided to send an email out to them on their podcast about possibly being a guest on our show. And Did you include a photo of you in your underoos? <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably, it probably would have helped even more, but it, either way it worked. <laughs> I would have sealed the deal instantaneously, yeah. probably. So uh, within a week I had a, a reply, and um, I was talking to their... Um, their communicator. Their they had some. Well, it wasn't. Was it, wasn't he a producer? No, I wasn't talking to Danny Labelle. Okay. I was talking to some female. I can't remember her name now. I think it was Becky. Um, and after communicating with her for about two weeks, she said, "Screw it. Here's her cell phone. Here's her personal email. You talk to her." <laughs> Hopefully, she got the okay with that. <laughs> well, she did. She did. She did. And you know, we just went back and forth, and then eventually we had. That Lana. was four years ago. That was four years ago. Yeah. And we yeah. had Lana Turner on the podcast twice now. She's. We're working on getting her back on, and hopefully get Ralphie on. But. We went to Green Bay to see Ralphie's comic or his comedy stand -up show, comedian stand -up show, show. Yeah. and uh, she had him pick her up in uh, Kentucky, where they have a house, and brought her up with him to Green Bay, and then we went and met them. And she flipped out. She's like, "Oh, I'm kind of the fan geek now because I get to meet you guys." And it's like, "Oh, yeah. they're like, oh, doing the same yeah. thing." It's like, "Oh, cool, we get to meet her, and yeah. she's doing the same thing." So she so. kind of geeked out on us, and we geeked we, out on yeah. her. So, yeah. so we all geeked fine. out together. Yeah. <laughs> we were all geeking. It was a good. It was a good experience. Yeah. So. so I mean, that was probably the only person I think that's ever geeked. And out then the whole time there, we got pictures of uh, Ralphie May, and but we never got a picture yeah, with her. I was so pissed about that. She was busy doing the concession stuff, but. Yeah, it, it, it's nice, you know. When you when you talk about, you know, meeting the people and 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 um, communicating with those that listen, or just the guests like you guys. I mean, I was blown away. I got a phone call one day, and I completely forgot. I gave you my number, and here I'm drawing Holly, and Holly's calling me, and I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> I asked my phone. Oh, is, is that you the have your underoos on? <laughs> well, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know you were the one with the aviator glasses on. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, okay. Well, nice. <laughs> okay. So, so here I am drawing her, and she calls, and I'm next thing you know, an hour and a half conversation later, and it's like, wow, this is weird, you know? It's, it, oh, you, so you geeked out? I was her. geeking out a little. <laughs> I get off the phone, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's yeah. just weird, you know? And to me, the, those small things like that, though, are what really make this appre – I, I appreciate it more and more every day. You know, like you said, it's the holy grail. Yeah. For us, a guest is the holy grail. You get that one person you want to talk to, and, you know, of course, we're going to move on from – that one guest to the next guest, hopefully. You know, we don't always have guests on. I mean, our conversations are sometimes just us, you know. Yeah, which isn't bad. Sometimes you got to have just the, the four of us just to kind of yeah. kind of recoup again and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of figure out where our next game plan is going to head. But, you know, thanks again for both of you being on our show today. We're not done talking to them No, yet. we're not done yet. <laughs> I just want to appreciate that you guys took uh, your, your personal time away and, yeah. you know, the, the oh, grace was with your presence today. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had such a great conversation, Adam and I. I, you know, I was like, yeah, these guys seem so nice, so genuine. They're family. I am. I am. These guys. Oh, fuck these guys. Oh, fuck these guys. Fuck my God. God. I think you already got some brownie points already. <laughs> yeah, he warned me about you. Yeah. <laughs> Which one, him or me? Uh, my, 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 the oldest. Oh, the all of us. The oh, all of us. Oh. Yeah, but you know, the worst part of it is you, you take that more sometimes in a negative way about me. What, Gandalf? Oh, yeah, no, not no, no, I'm not that, saying Gandalf. Yeah. I like Gandalf. I was Gandalf talking one. about Grumpy Smurf. I didn't like the Grumpy <laughs> Smurf. <laughs> no, wasn't grumpy, a Smurf. Wasn't grumpy, uh, grumpy, uh, that was blue, not me. Yeah, but you would have told her to tell me that. No, I didn't. No, I was telling her to hit herself. on Red oh. Hots. I wanted Red Hots to blush so bad his oh. hair was not red enough. 
you don't mess with Blue. Yeah, no. no she's, she's she can she can cookie. she can punch back pretty good with oh, some yeah. uh, witty comments. Yeah. Oh no, the grumpy one of the seven dwarfs. Or, yeah. Uh, See, that's what we were gonna do. We we're gonna have yeah, a picture yeah. of Blue like uh, Snow White, and then we we're gonna have oh, the four of us as one of the elves or not the elves, dwarfs. But yeah. dwarfs. And they gave me as grumpy. Grumpy. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> you got, okay? I'm exotic. <laughs> she, no, she just gave you a compliment. She said I you're know. doc. No. Yeah, you're I like that one better. I really do. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you may not approve, but tough shit. I approve. I approve. I appreciate it. I would have never asked you to be on the podcast if I didn't like who you were. You gotta quit. Gotta quit. Yeah, that, that was point. your fault, not mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I am regretting oh. it. <laughs> Anyway, back to these guys, because they're our guests. Um, I, I'm so fascinated with the art aspect of it, because I do a lot of art and drawing myself, and I've recently gotten back into it. You know, I've drawn my whole life, but uh, right now it's kind of the... Yeah, it, it seems your like uh, the, back. Yeah, it seems like your, your your lob is flowing more. Yeah, I think it's because I don't have right. now. His holy grail is full now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've reached this grail, uh, and now I'm moving on to another one. If you want, now you're going for the shot of Turin. Yes, though. I have chosen wisely. <laughs> 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 but um, I uh, you know, as I'm saying to other people, it's it's just I'm cry it weeps out of me lately, and I've got too much of it to get out. So it, it, I enjoy it, that aspect of it. One of the things, though, too, is I, I work for a printing company, and I deal with a lot of books, and a lot of the books that we've been doing lately are Marvel books, um, Dark Dark Horse comics, and stuff like that. Movie-based stuff, too. A lot of it is all movie-based, yeah. you know, tabletop movie-based. So the, the sad thing is, is I get to see the inside to a lot of the movie stuff that most people that aren't a part of it themselves get to see. So it kind of I, already ruins know, it for you. I already know everything about the new Avengers, just to put it that way. But yeah. I can't tell you anything about it because I'm under... I have a written thing I can't talk about. You see, so, you know, you'd be shot. See, so you know, when I was working no, there, fired. <laughs> when I was working there for my brief couple months, um, that was when the the dark the uh, Dark Knight Rises was yeah, starting to come out. Blu-ray book. The and uh, for the movie trilogy. we saw, I saw so many copies of that. It's like I was already kind of paging through some of the some of the pages already. I'm going, man, this is already kind of giving me an insight of well. The Everything movie already. Out, yeah. It kind of ruins it for you in a way. It does, you know, and especially like you know, a long time ago, we used to do like four color. Um, they're called Dupont waterproofs, and basically they're they're uh, like a one sheet or a proof of the work that's going through. Um, I had to do the Spider-Man proofs. 77 times, so I've, you know, I knew everything about the damn movie. <laughs> so I don't, <laughs> yeah, so it, it kind of actually took it away from me. I, I really don't enjoy those movies as much as I enjoy the ones that I don't know anything about, you know. Did you feel like a fly getting trapped in his wedding? No. No? No? No, no not at all. I, I'm really sick of Peter <laughs> Parker, though, I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I, but back to the art and the printing of it, comic books used to be printed on newsprint paper, and, mm -hmm. the, and the printing was just shit, because back then nobody knew anything about the, how to print appropriately. Good quality paper. And dealing with dot gain and dealing with color contrast and stuff like that. And yeah, on top of that with the patterns, and then you get the moray patterns, which are now used as a style instead of being actual bad printing um, or a printing anomaly. But uh, nowadays, everything seems to be going to a glossy type paper, like what Playboy magazines are printed on. Mm -hmm. um, have you noticed anything in the, in the industry as you've gone on of why people are going that route? Is it because of the print? Um, the way the quality of the or print. or is it more aesthetically pleasing to the eye? Maybe I'm not sure. Well, with our books, um, when we first started out, we were given a bunch of different uh, paper, and uh, we were giving samples of what your artwork's going to look like if it's printed on this paper. And personally, it was just something that I enjoyed. I, I wanted the the white paper, the uh, the inks being very bright on it. Um, whether it, it was cheaper one way or another didn't really factor into uh, my decision. It was what looked the best. And also I had to put my, I, I had to sort of like think about the, the, the reader who's going to walk into that store and pick up one of our books. Mm -hmm. When they, they pick it up, is it going to feel really flimsy to mm -hmm. them? Uh, it, it's like it's a three dollar book. I mean, some comics are going for you know much more, but I still want that to feel like uh, you know a, a comic book that they could hold that it's not going to like bend uh, mm -hmm. in a, sort of like a very. Yeah, there's a new trend. It's called self cover now, where they don't use the higher point uh, paper stock for the cover. That they actually use the interior weight 
So it's it's like a very floppy where we we still want the cover to feel pristine and right. pristine. But what I find interesting, just personally for me, is you know the covers or the uh, the artwork that I produce. I, I do want the, the colors to be as bright as possible. Uh, I want the pages to be really. Uh, it's just sort of like the, the, I want. I just want it to feel good in your hands as well as look good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I notice that if they reprint some of the older books that were printed on newsprint when I was a when I was a kid and they printed on better stock paper I find that it, it loses some of that for me uh, yeah. I don't know if it's with you guys if you've seen some uh, older comic books reprinted on better on better paper or or if they decide to recolor older comic books uh, I still miss that sort of newsprint that uh, I'm used to when I was growing up yeah. There's a nostalgia to it, and then that's kind of one of the things that I noticed too with the comic book industry. Because I, going into the comic stores with my kids now, you know, I've never been a big comic book reader. You know, I it's just one thing I, I've never had the time for it. I'm always busy doing something, so I never have the time to sit down. That's why I listen to audio books. Um, but I, um, I noticed you know there's a nostalgia to that. You know, when you go to like a resale shop and there's old comics there, and you know everybody wants that pristine comic, and they want to find that one that's you know, worth millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars or twenty-five, fifty dollars, whatever. It, it you're not going to find it, obviously. But there's some nostalgia to having the bent corner, you know, the flimsy cover, those older books. And you're right when you go in and you look at the new ones, you're looking at the quality of the book as well as the quality of the storyline, the quality of the art, and wh where what it's going to make you feel like in general. Um, I, I don't like the flimsy cover books, I and mean, that's just me. You know, I find myself going more towards the graphic novels, hard case covers, because you know I work in a book industry. I know <laughs> the difference between each of those books are, you know, uh, so drastic. You know, when you're we, running from we a. Actually, when we do the flop, the bi-monthly floppy, we actually have it more unique. Uh, before it goes into a trade, because we do back pages, and in our back pages, we include photos of readers. We feature one of our uh, female readers. She's our broadsword girl of that issue. Oh. Um, we include vacation photos, convention photos, um, things like that. So it it may be you know a saddle stitch book, but it is unique and special. Mm -hmm. And then when we do the trade, you know that we kind of have to make room for all the stories. We 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 gather around five issues. So a lot of the back pages can't be reprinted. So in a way, we kind of try to make them both special. One may be a prestige, uh, prestigious print um, of a perfect bound, but that that floppy, that that saddle stitch is going to have a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. connection with who we are as people. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for example, you, you mentioned comic cons. Uh, in the back of some of our monthly books, we do have uh, photos of us at the comic con. So. For people who haven't been to a Comic Con or couldn't make it, they could pick up the latest issue of Tarot and they'll go, oh, Jim and Holly was at San Diego Comic Con, or they were in Germany, and this is who they met, or this is their experience. And, and in a way, it's sort of, uh, it, it, once again, it, it's sort of a, a connection you have with your readers that uh, we've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And um, that those photographs won't be in the collected trade paperbacks because you just need, you just have so much room for like five issues that you don't have the uh, the advantage of having extra pages in the back. And also, if you did make it to the Comic Con, you may end up in our back pages because we do also have like little snapshots of all the people we did meet that talked to us that, you know, were one of our cost, one of our characters cosplayed or costumed as one of our characters, we will feature them. We've even featured some of uh, costumers on our covers, uh, body painted as our characters, some of them. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it sounds like uh, your, your book is kind of stands out in the crowd in a way, you know, with, uh, with what you do at the, in the back of the book or whatever. Uh, there's not a lot of other books that do that. I've never heard of other books doing yeah. that. Is that something That's that you guys first. mainly do and maybe no one else is doing? I don't know. We just do what we feel we, we want to do what we need to do. You know, it's natural. It yeah. was 
it was a decision we made right from the from day one. We said, uh, you know, the first 22 pages will be uh, comic books, uh, or I'm sorry, story. will be story, and then the back pages. I wanted to have a broadsword girl. I wanted to have uh, photos of us, you know, meeting some of the readers, and it was sort of like almost, you know, turning the spotlight back on the readers uh, because I thought that there was too many times that uh, the readers uh, weren't getting the spotlight. Right. That's awesome. I mean, it, it sounds very oh. unique. I don't think I've ever seen that yeah, in any other type of I don't think book. I've heard of anything yeah, but, no, first. It, your stories, when you say you 22 pages, uh, what's the most common page quantity that you guys usually run a storyline? It, it's uh, 22 pages per book, but storylines over several. Well, it's a 32-page story. Uh, it's 32-page comic book, 22 of it. Usually, story is a story. story. Sometimes it does go further. Okay. We've had, uh, I think, 28 pages once. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. So, and then um, in the latest issue, I, I actually have a one-page school bites um, beginning of a mini story um, in the back of Tarot. So, you know, we like to put fun stuff back. So do you guys have a hard time sometimes, uh, you know, kind of getting in a rut coming up with a story or trying to finish a story? Or uh, uh, the story just keeps continuing and continuing and you know where it's going? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm always interested in sort of the next week because as I'm following it, something will spark another idea that I'll write down and go, I'll have to remember this, and then uh, I'll look back on it and then make a story around that. Oh, okay, okay. And you've been uh, doing this uh, storyline uh, for, for how long now? 93 issues. 93 issues? Yeah, the, the character, uh, Tara, which was that, uh, has been... Uh, 91 just came out last year. So then you keep a notepad with you pretty much almost all the time then, right? So if you get an idea, you're jotting it down? <laughs> okay, well, let me explain something for you. Well, I mean... No, I, no, I, I, I'm going to make funny a little bit. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> you do that actually, all the time. We don't need to hear it now. If you'd actually I'm read asking a them a question. Book, I'm not asking you a question. If you'd I'm actually read a, a comic book, you'd know that the stories aren't like a book. book. No, I They're, understand that, but you know, I understand that. But I mean, I'm saying, if there was a thing, if there was, a, there was something that an idea that just came up mm -hmm. that you want to put in a comic book. That's what I'm saying. Do you have something on you? I mean, I mean, write it down, put it on your phone, on your notepad or whatever, yeah. so that way there you can remember that certain thing you want to add into that storyline. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, it wouldn't actually be to add something into a storyline like, you know, you shove it in there. It would be an actual bigger story. Sure. Because there's okay. uh, I would even people... And they will tell me something, and they will click, and visual in my head, and I'll go either back to my studio or to the hotel room, and I'll write something down, or mm -hmm. I'll sketch out what's in my head really quick. And if it's interesting after a few more weeks, then I know I have something that I want to understand. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I because I don't know the process. I mean, I don't know the process hey, of how a comic it's book. Okay. I mean, I, I mean. I That's just assume what they do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think you you're, know, you're, I mean, you're always thinking of more and more stuff. But I mean, I know with story. writers and regular books, I mean, a lot like, you know, like Stephen King, he keeps a notepad with him everywhere he goes. I mean, he can wake up in the middle of the night, he's jotting things down for his next book or next story or whatever he's going to be doing. And right. I mean, he's constantly doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know writing a book book is completely different than writing a comic book. But I just wanted, you know, that, I mean, you answered my question about that where, yeah, I mean, you know, as I mean, as I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, and how how these stories come, you know, I mean, you know, how did the how did your comic book originated from? I mean, how did it really? I mean, yeah, where'd you come did, up you with know, the concepts? Yeah, for the concept that of you guys that made. one story. Uh, the story or the character? The character. The, the, the main character that I came up with. Uh, I think it took a period of years because as I was coming up with these characters. I was also some Catwoman, but I was on a bad animal. Right. You just don't have a lot of the to sort of create something and then go. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was when I was looking to have some time that I, I woke up and those that And you might Google them and change them because you've drawn the image uh, several years ago, and now you have a better take on the character. So there was a lot of smart. And it can either be meeting people, and I always say a lot of my stories come from people that I've met, 
more right. well because it becomes more real to me. And then you, you sort of, you know, twist it or you, you add a doctor to it. Uh, but there's always sort of like this, this silver lining or this, 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 this truth in, in all okay. these stories. Uh, and that's, that's, that's what's about that's me is because I look at these stories and go, this story is really about this person. Right. Is it, was it hard for you to break away from you know, DC and go off on your own and, and create these storylines? I mean, were you more conditioned to do the stuff that they wanted you to do? I mean, what, what inspired you to just get away and do your own thing? It's funny, I don't think of it as those terms. Well, I always thought about doing your own thing is doing what you love. So if I was drawing Batman or, or Catwoman, I, I was loving that. Uh, so I, I didn't even break away from that. Uh, when I went to the so I find myself you know, doing something, oh, I really like it. this is a bad thing. Okay. Uh, so... I don't know what's ahead of them in the next few years. I just know what I'm working on now. And, it, and I have a good feeling that if I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing, then that's, that's great. And if readers enjoy it, then that's mm -hmm. That's awesome. But, uh, to go back, there's always that little kid inside me that's right. going to go, wow, I want to go Spider Man. Or, wow, I want to go. And then that's why I do take on projects. Uh, like Holly mentioned, the Catwoman. Uh, there's a variant cover that I did for another company that I can't talk about right now. But uh, we said yes to that because I was like, I have a little kids book. And sure. I thought, oh, I or, you know, you famous people on the road, and uh, they come up to me and they say, well, you can draw that. And uh, once again, I'm yeah. in the bedroom drawing your favorite characters, and now this. Famous person's coming to me and saying, "I like you. Can you draw that? Can we team up?" And that little kid's going, like, "Yeah, you know, the business time. Well, do I have a time to do that?" Right. And that's when I have to say, "Well, let me go back and pick my schedule." <laughs> it's always cool to do a little collaborative effort with somebody else too. That you guys share the same. Uh, same interests too, so that's mm -hmm. always helping. You know, creative juice is flowing a little bit more that way. I think. Yeah, well, the, the example I'm talking about is uh, I'm a big kiss man, and I like uh, Simmons. You, you say kiss? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, Six is a big kiss fan as well. Uh, this, this audio went out there for a second when you said it. <laughs> no, you you were just saying you got to meet Gene Simmons. Yeah, I've met Gene Simmons several times, and I do ask him to do. Except not once, several times. <laughs> <laughs> not once, oh, several times. And then he had to rub it in and say several. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And he's asked me, he has asked me to work on, uh, actually to illustrate two of his covers for the Dominatrix. Oh, that's cool. That's so, awesome. when, you know, that little kid again, you know, drawing Kiss in the bedroom, and then actually getting emails and then talking to him face to face, talking about the character. It's just something you just go. You know, I have to do this. You know, and you come back home and you. you no, yeah, I would too. <laughs> now, one question though: He is really a nice guy, though, isn't he? I mean, he's a very down-to-earth, very nice guy. I mean, because what I've, what I've heard and what I've actually seen, you know, that's what he portrays himself as a very, very down-to-earth, very likable guy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Gene is. Simmons, when you yeah. met him. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had no problems at all. Yeah. I mean, he is a he's a, a nice man. Right. I have no problems talking with him. Uh, you know, except for that. Once again, that that kid inside you is going like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, as a businessman, I had no problems with him. As uh, as a, being a creative force, he's very interesting to talk with and to communicate with. It's it 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 was a lot of fun, and I have no regrets. It, it was yeah. great. There's always uh, you always hear stories about people who meet their heroes. Right, and right. So disappointed. Well, that's never happened to me. So yeah. I'm, see, I'm, that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't, there's some people that I've, if I wanted to meet, I don't really want to meet it because I don't want to dis be disappointed in the person who I think that person is. You right. know. So sometimes it's better off. Eh, let's not even meet it, <laughs> that person. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to be like Kevin well, Smith who met his idol. You know, uh, what's his, what's that actor's name? Fuck, Bruce Willis. Got yeah. to work with him and do all that stuff, and now he doesn't like him. <laughs> so I mean, like, because I'm such a big Star Trek fan, and I mean, there are, you know, 
Leonard Nimoy was one of them I really wanted to see, but of course, you know, he passed away before I could. Um, whether you know, if I could have, but uh, but you know, William Shatner's still alive, and he's one of them that I would like to meet in person ever. And I know he does go to some of the different <laughs> comic cons. uh, comic cons and other. Uh, uh, you just got to get a hold of Priceline. You probably will. But then I'd love to get a hold. Of, but my favorite, <laughs> my, my favorite character on the Star Trek was uh, Whoopi Goldberg's uh, character, is Guinan, and I just loved what she did on that show. And I'd love to, you know, now she would be one I'd really love yeah, to meet. All you gotta do is go to their websites now and find out where. Oh, they're I got her on Twitter. I follow her you all know, over. I do everything. You're a stalker. That is a, that yeah, is I'm a one, stalker. That is one person I would have never have thought to be on any sci-fi show. I would have never. Whoopi either. Goldberg, you'd never think. No. No. Uh -uh. But oh, from where she came from as a as a, a beginner as a comedian and yeah. you know doing. You see stuff. her in Sister Act, and then she's guided. <laughs> 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 he, either one worked with the bar, I guess. <laughs> Well, if you do meet your your idols, you might meet them on a bad day. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there are times where I've seen, uh, you know, celebrities act, I, I guess, uh, disrespectful. Okay. But uh, it could be either they had a bad day, or, um, I mean, everyone's human. And yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Everybody oh, yeah. gets stressed well, out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But you know, oh I, I I did meet one I did meet one um, actor uh, in my life. I was down in Florida, and uh, he's I passed came across, well. He passed away also. Um, me and my wife were on one of our so honeymoon honeymoon it. excursions. You know, once we used to always get away every once in a while. We were down in um, in Fort Lauderdale for about seven days, and I literally ran into Sherman Helmsley. That played Mr. Jefferson in, in the Jeffersons. I mean, I literally ran into him. I mean, he. I didn't expect him to be as short as he was mm -hmm. at first. I mean, he came like a, to me, you know, up to my chin. And I mean, he was coming out of the hotel. He was in a hurry to leave to go to a business meeting, and we were going in because we had to go and get changed and jump on a boat and go somewhere else. And I mean, I literally turned a corner, went in, and he. We just ran right into each other. And I and at first when I saw him I thought I was gonna say you're Mr. Jefferson but I didn't say that because I, I want you know because I figured I figured you know he's probably down here on vacation I didn't know where he was going and I figured you know he probably gets that all the time you know yeah. and I said I know who you are and I says you're you know Sherman Helmsley and she, he says yes and he, he says well I don't have time to talk he says I said well it's nice to meet you and he took off and then I went back to the hotel room you know so that was the only time I ever act. You know, met anybody well, like I that. I think that's one of the benefits of like the Comic Cons or the, those types of shows that go on around. You know, I mean, there's East Coast and West Coast, mm -hmm. but there's also smaller ones that go on that you don't get so many famous people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've I'm, I've heard about them being around forever, but within the last five years, probably, you know, Comic Con has become yeah. a, huge, a, a huge a huge yeah. event and uh, you know, more more. Um, what would you say? Uh, Publicized, you know, more um, in the limelight. Well, because now they have that show it. that's on what is it, Sci-Fi, I believe it is, or I don't remember. What it's, what it's called cosplay, where they, you yeah. know, you haven't seen that. You haven't seen it. Well, I don't want to, but I think that's finished. Is it? Yeah, because I guess I don't know. This one woman that's on there, she's I don't know, queen of cosplay. I think that's what she keeps <laughs> saying. I don't know. Who the, I don't even know who she is. She's an Oriental woman. And I mean, she's done a lot of things, and oh, she's been doing a lot of judging about, on cosplays. You know, on the app. Yeah, we talked about her before. But I don't. I can't remember. What her I was saying though is, that it's the but benefit it's of those the benefit of those gatherings where people can get together and geek out about all the things that they really like and enjoy. You know, the, you don't get a lot of that, especially when it comes to the types of musicians and actors that, that are famous. You know, so now comic cons have been going more to the movie base because comics have been going to the movie more, movie. more mm -hmm. and more. Yeah. And um, you know, I I think it's awesome that you can get you know like the whole cast of The Walking Dead will do a you know a panel, and then you get mm -hmm. you know the whole cast of you know Amer uh, what um, I I got to uh, one of those big panels for the first time, and we've been doing Comic Con for you know twenty something years, and about two years ago, um, I found myself sitting in the media portion of the Doctor Who. Oh, uh, oh sure. <laughs> Uh, panel, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since I was 11 years old. Tom Baker was my first doctor. Yep. So I, it was a very private, like I told you, I was a, a, a big geek growing up. I loved Doctor Who, Star Wars, all science fiction stuff. Um, 
and there were 6,000 people in this auditorium. Oh. It was like a Beatles concert. <laughs> yeah. like Matt Smith came out, I think I heard them make pee-pees on themselves in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I just sat there and wept a little, you know, because they were doing these special um, sort of videos that they made for the audience of all the doctors through the years and to me that was like my childhood where these kids were still in their childhood. Right. It, it was insane and, and it was from obvious from their uh, reaction um, coming from uh, um, England to America that the American audience was uh, 180 from the British fan and that, you know, they were just like, you guys are really hyper about this, aren't you? <laughs> it, it, it's fun, you know, to, to see that exuberance and, and also a little, a little overwhelming, you know, to have 6,000, you know, it's like, what? So, so you, said, you said you've been going to Comic-Con for 20 almost plus. 20, 20 plus years. Were you guys always in booths or did you just go as, you know, sightseers? Um, no, we, we went as professionals, you know, whatever um, company we were working for, we usually were brought out by them um, and mm. guests. Uh, and then when we started our own company, we had our own um, Is it how, how has it changed over the years? I've never been to one, so... Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I've never been. I'm sorry. Good question. Been. I live huh? in the middle of Cowhump, Wisconsin, so I don't get out much. <laughs> yeah, you know, most of the excitement we have around here is tipping cows. Yeah. Uh, oh, come on. Now. <laughs> Well, uh, some of us read. Hey, hey, I do read. I know how to read. You know, I'm going to clarify this I'm right now. Kidding. We know, you I know read. how to read. We know. You're on so your computer okay. and your phone all the time. Hey, you know. Then let's cut it off right there. Cut it off right there. I think, the, for me, I feel like we kind of had this little secret that now everyone knows because there were times when we were at Comic Con and, you know, we're hanging out with Julie Newmar. Oh, uh, Julie Newmar. I yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> and we this walk, and I saw um, Batman. And Adam West. Adam West. I actually punched Adam West while I was wearing a Catwoman suit. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it was a New York punch. You know, I'm from New York, so I'm like, oh, psh. but, you know, I forget, you know, my strength. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. And, um... We saw a golem. Just walk. It, back then, the uh, talent wasn't afraid of walking the floors. Right. So you can just spring out and go, "Hey, how are you doing?" And can we have a photo. But now they're they're cloistered and protected, and rarely will you see them on the floors. Mm -hmm. So that that to me is the only sadness. You know. Like, oh, you know, we're not going to be able to see Adam West walk around with a cup of coffee or. It, it seems like a few individuals ruin it for everybody, right? That's pretty much the way it went, is that a few fanboys or fan women... No, I, I don't blame the fanboys or anything like that. It, it, it's more of the, the studios made it um, oh, okay. a place for advertising, I guess, and, and, and more of a show. And then when you are putting on a show, you do cloister the talent. You make right. them... Yeah, I got you. Just they are special, but you know now you have to wait, you know, 16 hours in line and sleep there to get into that. It it just became, um, I guess, more commercial. Do you see it dying down in the future? I don't know. I don't know. I did You know, it's like when you're experiencing it, you never figured it was going to happen this way. <laughs> you know. Well, I'm sure it crept up quick too. I mean, especially with the movie industry getting their their fingers in on it and being able to do what they do there. Yeah. If anything, it's probably making it going to you know, have staying power that way too. You know, If the movie executives and you know, companies get their fingers into that pie, they're, they're going to yeah, probably you know, expand it all even more. But some of those actors in, uh, that are in these, they, they love to roam around and meet their fans. But you know, because of studios and you know, they mm -hmm. want to now keep them like, caged in like, little cages and, oh, you get up to an... Oh, you, you do know, work for them. You know, I mean, but, but, you know what I mean? I mean it, it, to me, it seems like the more and more 
it gets where now they're put in in cages, you know, behind the tables. No, everybody has to stand back. They got all security guards around them. You can't really touch them or anything else, or you may go to jail. You know, I mean, it's just it's no. not the personality a of measure. being. Well, I understand that, and I, I mean, I understand that these places have to protect there are their interests that are still small enough that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Like in Florida, there's um, the what did they change it to the fright? The, it, it's a, a horror-based convention, sure. and they have some. I met Malcolm McDowell there. Oh, well, that would be cool. Yeah. And, and it was just amazing, you know, it was so relaxed, so casual, it reminded me of the salad days of San Diego. Sure. Sure. I also think it depends on how large the convention is. Uh, for San Diego, there's, you know, over 150,000 people. Yeah. So for a celebrity to go from point A to point B without being, uh, you know, Suffocated. surrounded by people... Uh, it would be very hard for him right. because yeah, they, they wouldn't be able to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. well, we just had a we just had a, a somewhat of a comic con. It's called Eagle Con here at the Elizabeth Center. You know, small thing. Um, you know, it's maybe like a fifty by fifty room. I mean, it's like a banquet room basically. And uh, they they had you know a guy brought in like a, a live actual working Dalek. You know, and you could get inside oh, yeah. and sit in it. You know, How come you didn't tell me? I would have been there. <laughs> I would have saw that. Oh, I'm sorry. I realized uh, shit. <laughs> it was kind of a last-minute deal. I didn't realize it was going on until I saw a post on Facebook from my sister-in-law, and I was like, "Oh, let's go!" So then I went. You know, it's just on the road, but um, you know, it's really small. But the, the, what they do there, though, is a lot of the people get together from a certain time frame, and then after like five o'clock at night, they have like um, role-playing, like board, large board games oh. all set up, and everybody gets to play their, you know, their games and stuff. And it's more of a like a community aspect than that aspect. Mm -hmm. When you look at it in that aspect, but it's not very big, you know. I mean, there's probably 200 people that came in and left throughout the whole day, you know. But mm -hmm. they're they're there for the 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 paraphernalia that's there and and you know the the signed things that other people that have gone to other comic cons have gotten and then they come back and try to resell it and stuff like that. And hmm. It's it's cool to be able to find those things that you normally can't find in your everyday. I, I like sometimes we do want to go as as spectators is you know yeah. having fun and we just did the Harry Potter celebration at Universal and like my my um, fantasy is just like you know all these hot Harry Potter fans getting together and just geeking out and talking and mm -hmm. dressing up and taking photos and so like you know to me that's the, it's about that part you know like coming together because we all love the same thing you mm -hmm. know as like-mindedness, you know, you, you yeah. get like-mindedness, and it's hard to find a group of people like that, you know, unless you get together for that purpose. I think the only time we went to a convention as a, uh, I guess, spectator. Spectator. Yeah. Oh, you want to tell a story? No, no, no. No, no go no. ahead. I'm trying to think of the right word. It is, is... Uh, well, it, we just we flew down to MegaCon, which is in Florida, and we didn't want to work the tables, and we just sort of wanted to enjoy it because there's a different atmosphere when you have to work the tables or you have to, you know, basically you're there for, for the readers, which is very cool. But we, or I know I do, I really miss what is going on around me. So, like, I never really see, like, the big displays or, or the celebrities. But there was this one time where I wanted to meet, uh, or we both wanted to meet Stan Lee, and he was appearing at Megacom in Florida. And... Uh, our schedule had like this window of opportunity of like two or three days where we said, let's just fly down to Florida, meet Stan, and then like fly back. But we didn't want to go down as a, as a company or as a professional artist. Right. We wanted you know, to just say, hey, this is the little kid in me that says, I met Stan Lee, you know. And the fan, the fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was probably the only time we did go to a convention where... Um, that we, we didn't bring our booths. Right. But, but it never fails. We're in line to, to meet Stan, and people recognize Jim, and they had comic books, and they're whipping them out. They're like, can you sign this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, sketches, things like that. Is there a... Um, I'm very naive to the comic book world when it comes to the people that are famous in the world of comic books. Um, is there a younger Stan Lee out there? Someone that's kind of may take that role on when this man passes away, or you know, yeah, you know, like a. Yeah, I I don't think you could point to anyone. Um, 
you know, Stan was so unique, or, or, you know, the time that Spider-Man was created was such a unique time. Same thing with, you know, Captain America or, mm -hmm. or any of the comic books, Superman, Batman, uh, to sort of say you're the next, you know, Stan Lee or you're the next, you know, so-and-so. I, I think it kind of, like, takes away from whoever is going to sort of... Uh, I don't... I hate to think anyone's going to be replacing anyone. They're just going to be either... Uh, yeah, but I want to more... On their own. I, right. think, I think the direction I was going with that was more, like, is there a newer... an innovator, somebody that's taking the world of comic books to a different Life level? storm, you know? You know, somewhere that... You know, because obviously there's never going to be a, a st another Stanley because he was kind of, you know, an He's original a person, creator yeah. He's a unique of many person things. himself. And there's more other than just Stan Lee, too. There's other yeah. creators out there that, that were on the same level as him. But I, I think it's just, you know, there, uh, maybe it's a botched question. <laughs> I, I think also it's going to come from whatever generation is going to put that person either on a pedestal or a spotlight. Uh, mm -hmm. it, I think if anyone points to somebody, that almost becomes like advertising. Okay. Like, oh, he's the next guy you got to go interview because okay. of this. Because he has two agents behind him that says so, you know. Right. <laughs> it, it depends on once again listening to the child inside you, mm -hmm. and if it seems like a lot of these children get together and they start pointing the finger at somebody, that might be that next person. Mm -hmm. Do you see a big change into the digital aspect? I know that you know with tablets and you know iPads and iPhones and you know, all these new computerized electronics that have the capability of doing like a digital books and stuff like that. I know it's on your website you guys do have a digital aspect to it. Um, is, is there a, a serious change between the actual hard copy that you make compared to the digital copy that you're making? The, the content is the same. Uh, sometimes on our private site, on the member that's, site, that's true. we actually have pages that um, it, that didn't go to press that we thought uh, we, we are a mature reader that may have tipped it toward an adult book mm -hmm. so uh, we don't print that but we don't want to lose it because it's art and it's storytelling and obviously it meant a lot to us to express so we place it somewhere that we feel we can share it um, because we are still being distributed worldwide by a company that has some rules and you know just like in the cinema you get rated PG or whatever um, so we do have a few things that we have to respect and we're happy to do so um, and then the things that we feel that can't fit in there we'll go oh we'll share here then you know so there we don't need to censor ourselves completely we can share what we were thinking here mm -hmm. what about the aspect in the art you know, being able to do digital art compared to the actual, you know, on paper art. Um, I think that's more a collector's choice. Uh, for for us, we we do color it digitally, so mm -hmm. we scan in the black and whites, and then they are now digital. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we do conceive of it, it's conceived as a printed page. So we are not just doing panel that can move to a panel. It is not motion comics. Okay. You're sharing our printed page digitally, mm -hmm. so it's there. You can move it around. You could blow it up so you can read it. You could, you know, blow it back so you could see the whole uh, layout. Um, so we're consciously not creating a motion ca uh, comic, which doesn't mean that maybe in the future we might. Um, and as a publisher, I am aware of that some people are now prefer to read their books or their comic books on digital devices. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I feel that we definitely had to be in, the, in that sort of pond as well. You know, personally, I, I still prefer you know, reading the books or, or reading the comic books in my hand, but there's, there's a lot of advantages of having it all digital. I mean, you could go to Marvel and sign up for their Marvel Online and read comic books that were printed you know, way back in the, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. fun. Uh, collectors that don't want to mess up the paper and they That's keep true. it pristine and then read it digitally. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've got a I've got a big collection down in my basement, which I should almost go dig through now since now I've got this conversation going on with you two about uh, you know comic books and everything. Now I've got so many downstairs from the Avengers to the X Men to. 
Batman, Superman. I mean, even have some off the wall ones Disney, too, like Disney ones too. Uh, yeah, I know you've really. got some Daffy Duck ones. Well, I might have had one or two yeah. in there, but uh, most of it was like all the action type uh, sci-fi. I think I even have one uh, was like a Dune based one from. Uh, oh yeah, from yeah, from, from, you, from yeah. the movie Dune or the the, the yeah. whatever the guy Herbert or Herbert. I can't remember his real name. Yeah. But uh, uh, Frank Herbert. Yeah, that's it. Um, but when I was younger, I, I, I had to go to Minnesota quite often for, uh, I had club feet when I was born. Uh -huh. So every time that we went from Wisconsin Rapids where I was born to Minnesota, we'd stop at Osseo, Wisconsin, which was a place we'd go and eat. And they always had a comic book store in there. And every time that we go there to eat, that would be like the first place we had to hit because I needed something to read on the way to Minnesota. So in the back seat of the car, I'm reading all these comic books the whole time. And then when I'm actually at the hospital, sometimes I'd stay there for months at a time. So I have mm -hmm. a whole collection of comic books to keep me occupied. So that's where a majority of my collection came from is when my trip all the way to go do all these uh, surgeries and stuff on It'd my be feet. interesting to revisit all those. So, yeah, I mean, I've got some of them in uh, the, the plastic with the I board in the board, back to make yeah. sure they don't bend and... Yeah, it's going to be cool to go back down there again and kind of relive some of that stuff now since I, know I got the little when spark. You get yeah, I'm going to do that today. I'll <laughs> <laughs> well, see. I mean, uh, you're going to play what? Play video games? <laughs> play art line, yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk. I'm going to read a comic book while I'm playing. <laughs> Are you playing Bloodborne yet? What's that again? Are you playing Bloodborne yet? That is one that I have not got to yet. Um, it looks very, uh, very dark. Very creepy. It's kind of like my my type of game. So yeah, I've seen some games. Dark playing. Souls. What's that? You play Dark Souls. That is one I've never played. My son, uh, he he does a lot of uh, like touches on certain games to kind of get like feedback on uh, what games are in, what games are not in, kind of type of stuff like that. And mm -hmm. he says the people that uh, made that Dark Souls mm -hmm. made the Bloodborne. He just says he's heard so many people say that the Dark Souls game is hard. Really hard, and I don't know. I don't know if he likes doesn't like to have the challenge because he won't play it because he doesn't want to lose all the time. But yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> sounds like him. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious on how it would be. But uh, with the game, game this yeah. new game out, I'm I'm pretty curious on on how. I was it watching is. a video on uh, Facebook yeah, last night when I got home. Or no, not last night. The night before this when morning. I got home, and I got home this morning. I meant the day before, and um. It was uh, like a virtual reality. You were on a pad, and you have this thing wrapped around your waist, and you have this big camera on your head, and you're playing the game, and you got to actually kind of run move around. and move and do all the stuff. And they yeah. like did three different games. It was awesome looking, you know. And I posted on my Facebook. It's it, if gaming goes that way, that would be awesome. I'm wondering if that's gonna be like a fad, like uh, you know, what Omni. The... Omni is it? What is it called? I think. Oh, no. oh. It's probably one of those new fads, you know, like the Power Glove when that came out. You know, that was like the next thing. The to VR, add, you know? these are the VR mask that they put. Or, on. or the, or the, the Wii. Everything was all motion based. You know, and, mm. you know, I don't mind doing that stuff, but if I'm going to get a workout <laughs> that way. I mean, I don't know. I'd rather just go out and run around and do something outside <laughs> at that point. But well, I mean, we talked about that, like uh, those gun remotes that they're coming out with. You know, they're already out. Yeah, that, we've talked about those on the show before. Mm -hmm. where you can play with an actual live gun and. Yeah. Well, it's a replica of the actual thing that you can use mm -hmm. in game. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. I'll just I'll just keep my uh keep my running and my video gaming separate. Yeah, but wouldn't <laughs> be nice though. Yeah. Now, now if I'm being chased by a guy well, with an axe, of, maybe one, then I'll start one, running. One of those but, videos was a scary game, and this was girl it? was walking through. It's like that one with the, where you only have the video recorder. What's that game? Um. <laughs> You're going to an insane asylum? Yeah, you I know what you're talking about. I played five minutes. Five. House on Haunted Hill? Oh, thanks. House of the what? House on Haunted Hill You had a little bit of that, yeah. where they captured the one word title. Yeah, yeah, there's um, a new game that came out for the PS4. Yeah, it was on a PS4. Your only weapon we, uh, is a video camera. Yeah, you have to document uh, like disturbing incidents at an insane asylum, and you got all these weird things happening, and all you can do is... Oh, 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 oh. I have it on mine, too. I've got it on my PS4, but I can't I remember the name it. of it. Well, either way, they, they were one of the videos... For me. Well, <laughs> thinking, Holly's thinking. Uh, one of those videos that were on that, that thing that I posted um, was a game like that, and this girl was playing, and she would get so scared she'd rip the, the, the thing off her head off. and everything. <laughs> It, you know, this thing would pop out, and she'd be like, "Ah!" And she'd take it off, and all, just to get out of the world. It was, it was, it was, oh, yeah. it was funny. 
I like those kind of games too. I, I, I Resident Evil 2 is that for me. I, I'd be upstairs in the dark and I'd be playing and then Nemesis would be after me and I'd just be dying and Jim would like be sneaking behind me and grab me and that would be it. I'd be like... <laughs> Oh, my wife, my wife did that one time. She made a mistake scaring me. We in our old house that we lived in, she we had um, like a wall between the living room and the bedrooms. It was a hallway, and you could actually go all the way around the whole the house. You know, it was like the mm-hmm. center of the house. Anyway, so she scared me one night, and I said, you know, payback's a bitch. I'm gonna get you back. Well, we were watching some scarier type movie for her. You know, for her, you know, the Munchkins. Probably wrong turn, right? We're scared. <laughs> But, um, yeah, wrong turn. <laughs> and uh, she went to the bathroom, and I'm like, this is my time. So oh, no. And she came back to me in the thing, and she walked through the doorway, and I, I, I just went, ah! And she jumped, screamed, ran to the bedroom, and jumped under the covers and started crying. Oh. And, you know, I'm laughing, thinking it was funny, and then I fell back because she started crying, and then, oh, then she started laughing. Did you have to get a Mr. Clean bucket and start <laughs> cleaning up a little mess on the floor? Yeah, a little urine trail all the way down. urine trail, no. <laughs> But ever since then, every time she tries to scare me again, I'm like, hey, remember that one time? I'll get you. <laughs> well, Red Hot's finally found out the name of that game, Outlast. What was it? It was Outlast. That was the name of the game we were trying to think of. That's what I was thinking of. It, it was another first-person horror game that just came out, and you had to move with it. Because I, I was interested, and then I found out that it was kinetic. Oh. I was like, oh, I, I just got that Star Wars dance party thing. And <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's I've never even heard funny. of that one. Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Oh, you didn't say that? Yeah. It's awesome. It's <laughs> so you can not uh, Darth Vader and start shaking a rug or, or cut you know, it? Han Solo. Oh. Ah. Yeah. And they actually take, like, Genie in the Bottle song and then put, like, Star Wars lyrics to oh, it. Lord. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's Awesome. Sounds like a parody six. Really, the only uh, really the only game that I've uh, recently downloaded not that long ago that was Star Wars based was a pinball game that they uh-huh. had PS3, and they have all like the really neat intricate backgrounds and I really good artwork. It was like the the tabletop boards of the old pinball machines. Yeah. They had like scenes from the movie. Oh, that's cool. And then when you get your 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 uh, ball into a certain area. You do like a little cut scene where you have like little like a uh, little fight between you and Luke Skywalker and Vader, you know, and you mm-hmm. got to try to get some stuff done that way. And, oh, that's that's cool. pretty neat. I got a feeling Disney's going to be coming out with a lot more now that they own the rights to all that stuff. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a big money maker for them guys. Yeah. Well, we've been doing books like you wouldn't believe. Mm-hmm. I mean, just constant, constant Star Wars stuff. And when we were talking to Blue Carson not, uh, last time on the show, we, uh, she said that down at uh, uh, Orlando or the Walt well, Disney World in Orlando, Florida, they got. Uh, They've got an actual area where they're going to start doing all Star Wars theme-based stuff. Well, they, they've had stuff like that before. I mean, I've seen videos of like uh, the Jedi, the Jedi Club, and stuff like you mm-hmm. can go and do a training. Yeah, stuff like no, that. No, only kids can go do the training. Aww. They don't allow the grown-ups. They, they used to have uh, Star Wars weekends years ago when they did allow the grown-ups to participate, and I came in six in the, the trivia. <laughs> Or Davis was um, the master of ceremonies. It was ah. really awesome. Um, but then as years went by, they cut all the grown-up stuff, and it's only for the, the kids. And, you know, it really stinks because we're the ones paying. They are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Riding the coattails over there with mom and dad. and uh, <laughs> You get to sit in the sidelines and watch them have a good time. I mean, there was, there was an occasional awesome moment. With, like, when did you, did you ever see the video where the little girl swears her allegiance to Lord Vader? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She bows down on one knee. I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that would be something I would do. <laughs> yeah. Through the Jedi's, I'm going Sith. <laughs> you know, when... It, you know what, like uh, Jim said before, you gotta stay with your inner kid. Oh, uh, there was yes. one time that uh, we were at McDonald's one time, and my kid was just at that age where he couldn't go into Playland no more, and him and I kind of snuck back there, and I crawled inside that. Uh, <laughs> I went up the little slide and came down, and I was the only adult in there, but I don't look like an adult. I look like a little munchkin anyway, but yeah. uh, I had a good time. Him and I snuck in there and had a good time doing that, so it's like I relive <laughs> our, our uh, little fun times, and I took him back. you got to do that stuff every now and then, you know? I mean, I, I hate it when people make make, it, make you feel like you have to be mature at certain points. Well, it's it's like, too, yeah, it's you know that. when you have to be and when, when yeah. you can kind of let loose. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> what, me mature or be a kid? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my wife always keeps play, uh, bitching at me because I don't act my age. Well, you, you know, know what? Fuck her. I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. So hey. where are you guys going with your comics now? Do you guys have anything new coming? Other than the same, you know, the the the, the tarot. Um, I know you do the tarot, and then you got school bites and um, the three little kittens, mm-hmm. perfect weapons. Is that another one that you did? Uh, what? What? Uh, what? Uh, well, we're a bi-monthly book, and uh, so we have everything. Or actually, I wrote out plot lines for everything up to issue 100. Okay. So that I know where the storylines are going, I know where the characters are going to be. Uh, with uh, the other titles like School Bites or Three Little Kittens, they may be inserted into either the storylines or as a specialty project right. through Kickstarter or, or something of that nature. All right. Yeah. Well, let us know when you do the Kickstarter because we'll, we'll, we'll... Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of projects we want to do. I know we want to do an Oracle deck um, for tarot. We want... I want to do. I, I did like a, a comic strip on our cat Panger. <laughs> Siamese. He he's right here. He's right here. I see a lot of the pictures. I follow her on Instagram, and and I see pictures of that cat oh, all the time. Oh, very yeah. beautiful cat. <laughs> His name's Pan. Is a her? Or it's a he. He a her? Uh, a female or a male? <laughs> it's a her, right? Oh no, it's a he. It's Prince Panger Bone the Fluffy. <laughs> wow, fluffy! <laughs> I love it. We'll just call him Panger for short. <laughs> Panger, and uh, he has a comic strip, and so I wanted to to collect that and do a book that probably would be a Kickstarter project because you know it's more personal. Yeah. Um, so I, it might just be for the people who back it. Um, and. You know, we have so many ideas. It's really the time constraints for us. I, I also did a, a guide for Disney and Universal, uh, talking about like the Star Wars um, special weekends and the Halloween Horror Nights, and I want to do a Harry Potter because that's really like my um, hobby is collecting information about Disney and Universal and all the hotels. Um, I'm sort of a fan of information. A lot of, of our friends, or even some of our readers, will um, message or phone call. You know, give me a phone call. Oh, we want to go. What should we do? Uh, how should I get the tickets? And I'm like, oh, well, just do this, that, the other thing. <laughs> no, I wonder. Uh, uh, when I was 13 years old, that was the last time I actually was at uh, Walt Disney World. Now, I remember they used to have, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, but the last thing I remember there, they had an MGM Studios. I don't know, is that even there anymore? It's called Hollywood Studios, and they're thinking about changing the name again. Really? Okay. Because I remember we went and saw an Indiana Jones stunt show at that time, which was awesome, I thought. <laughs> I, I when, I, when I saw it, it was pretty neat. Well, but they just closed it. Oh, they closed that? Okay. But I liked it, too. Yeah. I thought it was great. Oh, when you went like this, I thought you said no. It sucked. <laughs> no, no, the, it's oh, okay. closed. It's no, no. It was great. Yeah, I, I was, was pulled up and Did the stunt thingy? Yep. When when they had the explosions go off, I mean, they were real explosions. You could feel that heat, and we were like far enough back too. And it's like, wow, was like bring out kiss, your hot dogs. Like that kiss concert, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the Kiss concert, we were melting our face yeah. off at a 100 degree hockey rink. <laughs> yeah, we we saw a Kiss at Tiger Stadium when it was still open. When they were back in '96, when they first officially got back together, and that was like an an awesome time for me. We were behind a pole, a pillar. That was like our seat. It was like nosebleed seats behind a pillar. I don't know. We must have got really good uh, deals on them because uh, nobody was up there by us, but us four people. Oh, wow. And uh, we saw a few people run through the crowd trying to get closer to the stage. People were getting tackled because <laughs> they shouldn't have been down there. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I had his track shoes on. He was like cutting through, evading the security and everything. It was like nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that happens. I mean, when we went to Carbondale, Illinois, to see him, that they had that. That's when they did the um, like. Uh, that was like a zip line. ice, ice skating rink. Yeah, it was a hockey arena that yeah. they had, but they did a zip line out to the middle of the stadium, and mm-hmm. they had that little thing set up. And yep. um, uh, what's his name? Not Gene Simmons, but uh, Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley went out there. Yeah, my, my favorite part is "God of Thunder." I love that song. That's 
by far my favorite. They're song. they're a very <laughs> theatrical band. Yeah. I mean, they put on a really good stage presence, good good stage show. What an influence! So I mean, I still remember the first time I saw them on TV and where we were. Mm-hmm. We were at uh, the other Adams house in in Pulver Pine Village. We were in his oh, bedroom the yeah, first yeah. time I seen him. A little small white TV, black and white. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> really doesn't do the same when uh, he's spitting blood out. No. <laughs> no, no. The best part of the concert, though, I love, I love God of Thunder. Yeah. In general, though, um, so you guys are are you going to be done after that 100, um, or you just have the storyline up to 100? Um, no, uh, if we decide to go further, which so far we we plan to, uh, we'll just I'll just pick up with a, a new storyline. But uh, the reason I just said to 100 is because. Uh, a lot of people are sort of fixated on certain numbers. Okay, okay. They say, well, what are you doing for issue 50, or what are you doing for issue 75, what are you doing for issue 100? Mm-hmm. So I have something planned to that point. Uh, you know, once I get to issue, like I'm on, I'm on 92 right now, so my mind will start thinking about other things to go beyond 100. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have no plans of stopping at this point. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, when people said, oh, when you get to issue 50, are you going to stop? It was like, well, no. You know, right now, I'm still enjoying what I'm doing, and the readers are also enjoying it. So those are, like, the, the two basic things that, uh, you know, make me get up every day and draw. Yeah, you'll know when the time is when you can't carry that on anymore, too. So you'll know when that time comes. Yeah. You know, you'll keep going on until you have to, and... And you you know when there's a cutoff point and you can't continue the story anymore, you'll know when that comes. So. Yeah, but uh, I think what this Holly says, you don't wake up in the morning and go, "When is that time coming?" Oh, you never want to no, think no, that. No, 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 no. no. It's kind of like it defeats you in a way. Yeah. It yeah. Makes you decide not to draw that day because you go, "Oh, it's only another four issues and I'm done." You know. Yeah. Right. I, I think uh, you know once again, it's listening to that that inner child, you know, getting that holy grail again. And just going like, oh yeah, I want to do this. Uh, is it easy every morning to do this? No. I mean, there's times where you know Holly and I will. I mean, we almost work seven days a week, mm-hmm. right? and every day we're almost working either ten to twelve hours. Yep. So there are times where we we just sort of go, ah, oh, you know, let's let's just take you know the weekend off. Or, you know, we, we run down to Disney for, like, nine days. Did you ever see the movie Overboard with Goldie Hawn? Yeah, yeah a while yeah. back, yeah. Remember when she's just staring going, ba 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 I have those days. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody gets those days. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your brain's working overtime, and you just can't get nothing to kind of come out the way you want it to, so you feel like you're kind of mumbling, kind of. No, it's just... It's just exhaustion. Yeah. It has nothing to do with not being able to get it out. It, it usually means we got it all out. Yeah. We hit our deadlines, and we're uh, we we're it's that small moment of time between two issues. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, when I usually say that's when I drop and drool. You know, it's just like okay, it's almost like we have this amount of time. To be exhausted. Okay. Yeah. You you always need recovery time from everything you do. So. Yeah, I call it input. I need input. You know, and Jim will take me to a movie because I need input because okay. we're outputting so much. You know, we went to see Chappie and Cinderella. Oh. You know, one day after the other because, and it gives you energy to then okay now I can give. You know, I got something. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to cut yourself off from that world that you love so much, you know. Yeah, but you always gotta, but you always gotta step back and yeah, smell get roses. Away, get away from it for yeah. just a few minutes, just to breathe. Yeah. But it's crazy because it's not even like you're getting away. It's like you need to go deeper, and you yeah. need someone else who just you know put their <laughs> soul on a platter for you and shared it. Uh, it 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 gives you energy to then present your soul once again. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I, it's funny because I, I was a big gamer, and we're just so busy. W- what we do is we w- actually watch YouTube videos of other people gaming. <laughs> and I always say it's probably I don't like sports. I, I don't watch any uh, sports, but we're sitting eating 
lunch, and I'm screaming at these players, <laughs> Oh, man, pussy, come on, kill him, kill him. <laughs> Eat the blood thing, come on, help, help, help. You know, so it's, you know, you need that. You need yeah. that excitement. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. That, <laughs> Well, we all, way, we all mean, take I, our we all take our uh, uh, shots at yelling at the TV screen when we play too. Yeah. I'll do that with competitive eating too. I watch competitive eating. I'm like, come on! You can get one more <laughs> hot dog. One more. Fun. <laughs> Stand up, you'll get more room. Eat the purge, purge, purge. <laughs> yeah, purge. Water. <laughs> dip it, dip it. <laughs> I watch uh, Man versus Food. You know, uh, I mean, like, oh, uh, why did you order two different flavors of ice cream? You shouldn't have done that. You're going to feel sick. Yeah, a burger sounds good right now. I feel like I <laughs> want to puke every time I watch that one. Yeah, well, I'm I, surprised those guys ain't like 800 you, pounds. I mean, what he know? shoves in his mouth, no human being should be able to do what he does. It's amazing. I it's guess, I mean, well, it's he just, doesn't do it anymore. I know, that's, yeah. <laughs> And he's actually lost like about seventy five pounds since yeah. the last time they built. He's like a comic book character. He's got superpowers. He can eat all that food. You go. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine just sitting down and eating what he did. That what I'm just I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can have two bowls yeah. of chili and I'm like ready to burst. Ah, chili sounds good. I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> or lasagna. You know, like, lasagna. <laughs> yeah. you, you mow down that big plate of lasagna and you go yeah. get a second one. It's like, oh, i got to finish it. I can't let it go to waste. I want to do the ice cream set. We, we do the uh, the kitchen sink at uh, the uh, Beaches and Cream yeah. at Disney World and it's a giant sink of ice cream. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I could a sink. Sure. Literally a sink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. There are photos on our Facebook, and <laughs> I'm counting. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. We I, don't know very many places around here that have food challenges. You know, most of it's like hot wing type stuff. Hot, hot I don't know. B dubs. Yeah. That's the only place that yeah. really has anything. Yeah, you don't. It's really. everything's always the hot challenge. How hot can you get this to yeah. eat? You know, I've never been a really Ghost hot fan. Pepper. Ghost yeah. pepper challenge. Well, we we even we even did something on a show a few shows back where a friend of ours brought in some of these dried ghost peppers. Uh -huh. they were just small pieces, and I couldn't handle it. I felt like I was dying. Mm -hmm. Everybody's giving me crap. Oh, you can't handle it, man. Well, I don't think we were giving you crap. I think we were just laughing oh, the at cinnamon the, challenge? Oh, the cinnamon challenge. I remember you trying oh, that. <laughs> Thank you, Ice, you fucker. <laughs> I almost died that day. <laughs> you breathed in. That's, hey, that, that was, was the whole problem. idea. No, just it took, <laughs> wow. it took, six, it took no. six beers just to get the taste I out know. of my mouth. He was, he was having a rough time. <laughs> oh, I can do that. I can do that. Oh, you were so confident. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. You know what it looked like in here when we were done with that challenge? It looked like doing the spice challenge. <laughs> the spice of life. Yeah, <laughs> that challenges are fun. I love food challenges. My wife and I, she just joined us here. She, uh, we did one up in Superior eating burgers and stuff, and yeah, uh, it was just a one pound burger, but everything on it that went with it, you know. It, then I made the mistake of ordering a huge garlic steak and fries and then oh. a platter and everything else. So <laughs> and ate it all. And ate it all. Yeah, We're but we still have it. to do that. We still have to do the. Uh, the uh, tin can tin challenge. Can challenge yeah. Yeah. I don't six, know. Six cans. Of what? Unknown. Six cans. You yeah. haven't heard of it? No. We're all going to bring. You take six cans. Somebody else has to pick them out. Like she would have to go and buy six cans of whatever is in these. Take, the take all the labels off. off, and then you get all six sit in front of you, and you have to take one tablespoon of each and put it in your mouth and eat it. Mm -hmm. Whether it could be something good, Oyster, something bad, bad or uh, dog food. I mean, it could yeah. be anything. That's the challenge <laughs> oh, you got to take. Oh, no, not a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to at least eat one tablespoon out of each. Oh, uh, no. My dad was drinking last That's a dare. That's, That's a dare. That's a dare. challenge you have to train for. Yeah. yeah. We kept we keep talking about it. It's like we haven't done it yet. Who's, we we want right. to do it on the show one of these times. She's this right. That's me you were talking about. <laughs> she's this is right before you, you came. Yeah. <laughs> Holly's correct. That's but more you're of a part dare. of it now, so it's got to be all four of us now. Yeah, I'm sick that day. <laughs> There's a great Japanese movie called Glutton. Yeah. Glutton. I think I've heard of that one. Yeah. It, it's about um, food. Uh, what's it called? Um, Consumption. You know, food challenges. Okay. Oh, yeah. sure. Right, and um, it it's it's a great movie. It's sort of the Rocky. Of, of food challenges and and they have a good dojo and a evil dojo about how to eat the food 
you know, one dojo respects the food, and the other one is, you know, just get it down. Yeah. The Cobra Kai Fu Young against somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to see it. It's yeah. awesome. I was uh, actually when I was uh, communicating with Holly, I was I was watching uh, Homebound. Is it? Is that one where? Yeah. yeah, that that was a great movie. Yeah, don't don't talk about it because if the more you know, kind of ruins it. Yeah, it, well, it's it's kind of like Psycho, you know. Yeah, yeah, it it, they, so it re reminded me of um like Shaun of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, just that style of movie, and it's a UK mm -hmm. movie, so if you get no, it, it's New like Zealand it. actually. It's Homebound. A Kiwi, a Kiwi movie. I'm sorry. It's a Kiwi movie. It's you. It's it's New Zealand, not UK. Oh, it's, okay. Sorry, it's a New Zealand. Movie. Well, speaking of films, we should send you guys a copy of the film I was in. <laughs> I, I didn't have really. No, it's not nothing to be worried about. Not really. No, back in uh, back in 2003, I went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for uh, I I answered an ad in a paper to be in a film, an independent film from a, uh, a company called uh, Signal Fire Films, and the movie was called Six Bullets. It's basically a digital comic western with zombies in it. So basically, I was cast as a zombie in the movie. So it's uh, they actually uh, filmed a whole hour's worth of uh, footage, but they only they cut it down to a half hour to put into a film festival. So that was basically my 15 minutes of fame, basically, <laughs> which uh, we got that done in 2006, and I finally got a copy in 2007. We went and saw a screening of it, and then we got a bunch of copies of it. So if you guys would like a copy of it, we can send you a copy of it and uh, see if you can pick me out in there. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. So basically, I'm, it. I'm, a, I'm a zombie that wears an Indiana Jones fedora hat. I, I'm the one that... <laughs> I, I'm the first person that gets my butt kicked by an 11-year-old girl. <laughs> So it's a very good movie. They basically set it up like a comic book. They have like the old Batman pow, bang, you know, click, you know, type stuff on the screen with the That's movie. That's called. Uh, and they, they got them down in panels, too. They break down certain scenes in panels like a comic book. It's really uniquely done. I thought it was very good. Not just because I was in it, but it's really, really cool. It could have been different. something, you know, if they had a lot more money involved in, in this uh, film, it, it could have been something probably maybe in a theatrical it release, very, I'm hoping. Very unique. You don't see films like that. But And then also there was a second one I was in as well, but that one never saw the light of day either because uh, oh, basically the, the guy that was funding the money for it had a nervous breakdown and pulled out the funding, so they basically had to scrap the whole thing. And I actually had a speaking line in there. Oh, cool. But and you should get yeah, back into it again. Yeah. That was uh, called uh, the uh, three. It's not three hundred. It was like three fifty-five. It was a number like that. It was set back in a revolutionary war. Three nineteen or something like oh, that. Oh, three fifty-five or oh, something. Three fifty-five. So That's cool. But yeah, it was, it was like the Quaker times and stuff like that. So it was pretty neat. I had to wear a wig and. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we'll, we can send you a copy of that if you guys would like it. The what, Six Bullets movie, if you guys are interested. Yeah, it's called Six Bullets. What'd you say, Jim? It sounds like you want to be an actor. I, I did. Um, I, I don't think it's anything that I uh, I really want to be, but uh, I don't think it's really in the cards right now. Um, it just seems like there's that's a really cutthroat business to try to get into. And I guess if you don't know certain individuals or if you don't have a mom or a dad to kind of use a stepping stool to get into... Yeah, but, some actors, but that. some actors never had that. Some yeah. of them, they were found think, on the streets. I think for you, it's the idea that you, you would have to go somewhere else. You would have to go to audition after audition after sure, audition. Sure, sure. If you want it, here. you yeah, want I know, it. But you got to go out and grab it. He doesn't have time. For I just don't have the time. Okay. With yeah. my job yeah. now and with that, that's more of a hobby. It's it's something I wanted to do, but I, I don't think we it's don't really in a very cars. Very metropolitan type area yeah. either. I mean, we're in no, central we're Wisconsin, in, yeah. so you got to do a lot of traveling if you want to be in anything film-wise. Yeah, but you and did. You did it for those movies. But right? Milwaukee is a little bit closer than Los Angeles for yeah. me. So, but yeah. I you think know, you should keep I, it up. I'm lucky. I'm I'm fortunate enough to be in the one that I was in. I think you should keep so it. So I'm happy, and we're doing this. This is fun. This is kind of our outlet to get our our creative juices out there. You know. What do you mean the podcast? <laughs> the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You, while you're sitting there nude, just you just wanted to say creative, creative juices. juices. <laughs> you just told Holly and Jim you're sitting there naked. I'm not, by the way. Well, thank God. No, but so uh, one, the final question that I wanted to ask was: um, favorite comic book that you've ever read? Um, 
Uh, <laughs> well, there are a lot of them, you know. But there are particular ones like Red Sonia Number no. One by Frank Thorne with the um, unicorn. Uh, I think uh, Spider Woman Number no. One when you learn about Jessica Drew. Um, gosh. Uh, Spider Woman was always a sexy character in those comic books too. I don't know. I mean, I, I, it depends. I, I, are you thinking of the 1979 one? Uh, it's where she's really long, flowing blonde hair coming out the back, and she has like kind of half mask. <laughs> Or am, I, am I totally on a different person now, a different yeah. character? I'm probably thinking of more current ones. I read comics when I was a teenager. Um, okay. Back in 1979, actually, Jessica Drew kept her hair covered. It wasn't until later in the issue where she ripped off the back and she had black hair. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, she That's was cool. a very uh, reluctant hero. She she was experimented um, on her fa by her father, and that's how she got her, her powers. And she had... Um, a lot of uh, like uh, emo about it. Mm -hmm. So I liked her because she had uh, this in inner turmoil, and um, that made it interesting. Uh, same with Red Sonia. You know, here she was. She's like gorgeous and smart and sexy. She didn't want to have anything to do with boys. As a 15 year old, I related to that. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I had the physique. I you know. Um, I got the red hair, but got in trouble. Uh, for that. <laughs> <laughs> I went and got headed. I had a head in it back. Um, but I related to her. Um, and so they were my heroes. Did you agree with that movie adaptation that they did of Red Sonia with uh, Brigitte Nielsen? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I, was, I love the Conan movie. Oh, yeah. I, I loved it. I thought Arnold was my Conan. He had, you know, everything, the blue eyes, you know, it was just awesome. Um, you know, I went to the Red Sonia. Uh, she didn't have the metal bikini. It, it, was, it was not my Red Sonia. It wasn't Frank Thorne's Red Sonia. Uh, but when I came out, I, I saw the lead singer of uh, The Clash, so it was cool. <laughs> well, that made up for your disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know it was someone's adaptation did I see it? Yeah, I saw it um, was it my Red Sonia it wasn't my Red Sonia but maybe it was someone else's yeah uh, it, it seems like they tried too hard sometimes back then when they wanted to make a, a, a movie out of something like a book or whatever it seemed like they tried too hard and my Red Sonia, but it seems like it, was... uh, it, it kind of fell short of the wayside a little bit some of these movies they kind of made them and then forgot about them. And unless you're a diehard fan of some of them, I, I don't know if a lot of people really remember that, some of those movies. Like uh, Masters of the Universe, they made a movie adaptation of that one too. Right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, some people enjoyed it and some people didn't really care for it too much. Um, I don't think Dolph Lundgren could probably pull it off anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. he, he's the one, he was one of the best things of the Expendables, I thought. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed uh, his work there. Um, you know, it, it's it's sort of um, a, a jewel from the past. You know, I, everyone makes fun of the Howard the Duck movie, but you know, I love it. Yeah, it, that's uh, one of my favorites too. <laughs> yeah, it was something. It wasn't the comic book. It got a little cheesy, but there was something innocent and sweet. And I did like the duck. It looked like the comic book duck. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, his eyes were big. I was like. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, no, Howard's eyes, they they need to be bigger. <laughs> you, <know? Yeah. laughs> you guys do realize he's in there, right? There's a little like uh, Easter egg in the background. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize it until I watched the special features on there. I uh, didn't, didn't catch it right away. I haven't seen it yet. It's one I haven't seen yet. Well, when when they show good, the collector, when they show the guy, uh, Del Toro. Collector. Yeah, he's the collector in there. Okay. He basically collects all these different things from all the different planets. And Howard the Duck is up in the top. <laughs> he's, he's alive, but That's he's... Well, if kid. you like Guardians of the Galaxy I by did. James I Gunn, yeah. did I enjoy you that. see his movie, The Specials? The Specials? I've never okay. seen it. I'll write that down. You need to rent that. 
Okay. It is a genius movie. It's it's just awesome. And you know, it was his movie, his superhero movie, and it's okay. fabulous. The also one that he did too, James Gunn, the guy that did uh, uh, the movie uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, he did that horror movie called Slither too with those slugs. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's his movie. I love Slither. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one too. I, I love those types of films. It kind of reminds me of uh, the movie uh, Night of the Creeps. From yes. That. Yeah. It's <laughs> similar to that in many ways. Yeah. yeah that yeah. Hiss. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a, a movie called Hiss. Oh, Hiss. With, with, the, okay. with the snake, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love those kind of horror movies. Yeah, they're the best. I, there's, I, have you seen Tusk yet? Kevin Smith's new one, Tusk? Mm -mm. Oh, you want to talk about weird. <laughs> weird, weird. That's very weird. My my wife thought horns was really weird. That was actually pretty good. I, I didn't mind that. I like the horn. I like yeah. horns. That was that, that movie I, I really liked I just liked the whole the storyline, the idea of what was going on and, and why. It, it really didn't make any sense to me though why he got the horns, but I mean it just well, you know, I still see, liked it. See my wife reads a lot and she read the book before the movie and she was disappointed big time because oh, yeah. this has nothing lined up. She goes, There's this wasn't in there, that wasn't in there. She goes, if the movie was made just as itself, she says it would have been fine, but she goes, I gotta stop reading the I gotta stop reading the book before I see the movie because then she breaks it down so much and she gets so disappointed. So that's how I feel about the, the, the Harry horn, Potter. But the horns were. I thought it was okay. It was a little risque at sometimes in yeah. there. A little off the wall, but that's fine. It's fine though. <laughs> the horns only made the bad people come out with what their desires yeah. were, yeah. and the true, you know, the people that were good, were still the, true to their nature. True to their nature, yeah. exactly. It's just so weird seeing Daniel Radcliffe I know, being that, in that something like hard. that after that watching him growing up as Harry well, Potter. Yeah. Here, you know, yeah. it was. It's funny. <laughs> but he's grown up. I mean, he's got to do some. Uh, yeah, he's not just Harry. He, he's mean. got. Well, that's what he's known as. That's what's going to be on his on his uh, shoulder for the rest of his life. Well, let's but hope something else sparks that. Use that as a stepping form. stone to get another uh, field. So, yeah. but he's he's. Uh, he's quite well. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> he's planning his career pretty well, I think. He's really talented. So. Did you like the movie uh, The Woman in Black? Yes. That is one oh, yeah. I've never seen yet. Yeah, yeah one I haven't, I haven't seen. I went to I the theater. I went to the theater to see it. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I did think it was predictable. Was cool. You know, certain points where they they wanted to scare you. You, you knew. I kind of knew it was coming, so it didn't it throw me off guard at all. But I really enjoyed it. I, I haven't seen the second one coming out though. See, so you're right. I loved it because to me it was the rebirth of Hammer. You know, the Hammer Studios. I, I was a huge Hammer fan growing up. I love all the Christopher Lee movies, uh, Peter Cushion movies, um, and. Hammer really brought sex to horror movies. I mean, other than the exploitation movies that were underground, they took sexy ladies and they took monsters and they put them together. And they were the first company to do that. But then now everyone has done that, really. So um, when we went to see Woman in Black, I thought, oh my gosh, what they did now is they took children... Mm -hmm. And they took eerie death, and they put that together. Mm -hmm. And I thought it, it, there, there was just such a, a poetry to the, the horror that they were showing us that it may have been predictable, but it was beautiful, and it built like those old movies like Hell House, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Roddy McDowell. Mm -hmm. It just had a quality that I think that a lot of filmmakers have forgotten. Uh, that it is a visual, and you know, uh, and and a lot of it also happens in here visually, and you're like going, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I loved it. I thought it was some of the mo most beautiful eerie uh, horror that I've seen. I don't really like slash movies. I love ghost movies. I like monster movies. Mm -hmm. um, Alien movies. Yeah. Alien movies, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not not a big fan of like uh, the the Jason or or mm -hmm. Michael Myers that type yeah. of genre. No, I actually the first time I ever saw them was with Jim. You know, I I I, I and uh, what was it? Uh, what was the one in the sleep the camp? That was uh, Friday the Thirteenth or was Friday the Thirteenth Halloween. No, it wasn't Halloween. It was in the camp. Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake. Yeah, that's, 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 I went to a camp called Timberlake. 
Oh. Um, is uh, upstate New York in Shandaken. And uh, one summer, uh, we were not allowed to go out of our bunks when the sun went down. And it was said because there was some guy running around with an axe. Oh. And uh, the movie hadn't come out yet. Really? So um, I was wondering if that was the movie. <laughs> oh, weird. Yeah. I mean, it was a big deal. They had searchlights at night. It, it was really scary. And they're like, yeah, there's some guy. They, they found someone dead in the trunk of a car, and he's still on the loose. Well, it's, I believe give you an exciting weekend, huh? Gee, well, the, weekend, it was a summer camp. Summer camp. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Very many weekends. <laughs> I, I wasn't part of uh, Friday the, the first Friday the 13th film in Wisconsin. I thought yeah, it was I would filmed. not know. Okay. Was I thought it was filmed here at the uh, up north at the the camp, uh, the boys and girls camp. No, I'm not sure. Oh. Wow. Yeah, Crystal Lake. You'd have to you have to probably go search that Google search it. See, I'm gonna Google have to it. Yeah. So, uh, what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Oh boy, I think one that has a lot of staying power with me. I've talked about this numerous times. Would uh, be The Thing, uh, John Carpenter's original, wow. and not the one back in the '50s, but uh, the remake. I always thought that one's even right now. It still kind of freaks you out a little bit. You know, some of the special effects are kind of a little outdated, Cheesy. but still. Well, I <laughs> mean, for the time, for the time, for the time they good. were good, though. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and then they did a, they did a companion piece to that. It showed the Norwegian right. story, which I thought that went hand in hand. It wasn't really a remake; it was more of a companion. So I thought that was good, but yeah, I think the thing is probably my all-time favorite yeah. horror movie. Uh, and, and plus, I'm a I'm a Michael Myers fan too. My wife don't care for him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if really for scary for me. I mean, I I like like Exorcist type movies. Those are the ones that really kind of that's another one too. Get me, you know, because yeah, I, I, it's an, the idea of unknowing. You know, they they knew how to scare you back then too, and they're based off true stories, so it you it makes you think. It was on the edge of your seat type of thriller. The type Exorcist. Of, I mean, because you it didn't you know you didn't know where it was going. It was they were there to scare you, and that's I mean it was it was in your face. It wasn't a oh they're gonna they're not going to work you up to until all of a sudden, then they nail your ass. I mm. mean, it, it was always on your seat. You, you didn't see know it where coming. it was going. You can see this coming. Yeah. And you don't know what, what avenue it's going. When it, when it came out, I, I, I didn't see it, um, you know, luckily. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was still having trouble with blood on Satan's claw at that point. Um, <laughs> but everyone would, would say to me back then, you know, you look like the girl from The Exorcist. Oh, really? Linda uh, Blair, they said you look like. <laughs> they said, uh, "Oh, you know, you look just like Linda Blair. You look just like that little girl." And so, uh, for many years, I I went to sleep wondering if I was going to wake up possessed, just oh, because of freaking, oh. you know. Yeah. I was terrified of that movie, and I've never even saw it at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, never never watch any of the other ones. The original one's the only one to watch. The other ones are kinda eh. They're stupid. Yeah, yeah. so Yeah, I do I do agree that like children, you know, scary type movies with children in them are I, you know. Uh, you know he hates those. Uh, you can't watch them. You won't be able to watch Village of the Damned, I can tell you what? that. This is, no, I won't ever watch <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> Actually we did a we did a haunted house uh, for, a, for no. a fundraiser. Uh, oh, down at a bar for two days, and uh, Irv's son was dressed up as Chucky, and he looked just like Chucky too. Yeah, that was good. That was yeah. a good. We all dressed up as iconic characters from like the '80s, '70s, and the '90s. I was uh, Freddy Krueger. We had our own little hallway with doing the whole chant: one, two, Freddy's coming for you, three, four, better you lock your door, all the way down, and then. <laughs> He was a killer clown from outer I space. Got, <laughs> Irv was a butcher, almost like from uh, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And uh, my my cousin John's a big guy. He was Michael Myers, and uh, you were Jason Voorhees. Yeah. We actually did a cool picture when we were at the at the bar That's after we were saying. done. It was Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> we're playing. Uh, ping pong ball. Ball. No, it's foosball. Right, so right. I'm on one side of the table, he's on the other, and I got my claw up, and he's got his machete between my claws. It was pretty neat. Uh, that's he's got great. Michael Myers photo bombing in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we have got a lot of fun. We have we've had a lot of fun, you know, with the guests with like you guys, you know, talking and, and just doing the podcast. It just the things that we've done are you know, like you said, unbelievable. You know, it just 
every day you're like, oh, I did that. I mean, oh, so many that. cool individuals and talented people. Yes, and I just feel so honored to meet everybody that we've uh, come in contact with. So yeah, definitely. If it wasn't for this uh, this format that we're doing right now, we'd never probably meet half the people that we've met. So no. I think I think you know, like for us, you know, and with you guys as our guests, you know, I'm really naive to the comic book world. So it's you know. You've mentioned that a time ago. Right? Yeah, uh, I'm going to keep mentioning it. Naive. We know he's not naive, but, you know. Maybe it inspire you to look into it more. Well, it, and it has. You know, I, my, recently, like with my kids, taking them to the comic book store and getting those things. So I'm, I'm trying to find those types of things that really, you know, interest me. You just got to find one that sparks an interest and go with it. And go with like, it, Like yeah. uh, some broadsword comics. Yeah, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I was looking for the tarot, um, I was looking for the tarot uh, comics at the, at the store there. I wasn't able to locate any at that one, but... You know, we've got like five or six of them in the area. So. Well, that's one thing we never talked about. He said that you're kind of into the whole uh, uh, Zodiac type uh, stuff too, or the, what, what did you say it was? Like not the spiritual type? No, it's, she, she's into Zodiac Zod type stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The tarot type stuff, right? I yeah. do do tarot. I have done tarot for 42 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I Yep, I'm a practicing person. <laughs> you want to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're a practicing what? I'm sorry. Witch. A witch. A Wiccan awesome. or witch? Yeah, I'm a witch. Witch. Yeah. Awesome. See it A good witch. No. <laughs> you know, you always hear that. You always hear that in she's some a, of those. You know, are you a for good life. witch or are you a bad witch? <laughs> well, I always say I'm I'm a happy witch and junior Buddhist. So I try to, see good, try to see the good in everyone, but if you piss me off, I'll hex your ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll make so sure. If you have a hemorrhoid, you know you made me angry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Almost yeah. made you mad already. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I've never had a hemorrhoid, so if I get one, I'll know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> we make sure not to upset her. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No, definitely. Not. Well, that's never pretty cool. I mean, I suppose you, do you ever get like weird looks when you tell people that stuff, where they kind of like, or set it back, or they don't want to talk about certain things because you know when you say you're kind of a practicing one or whatever, they they freak out on you at all, or not on you, but... <laughs> well, I grew up in Manhattan, so no one really cared. Oh. <laughs> it's not like we live back in uh, the old, old days anymore where they freak out about stuff like that anymore. No. I don't think uh, people freak out. You know, it depends. Yeah. If it comes up in, in conversation, usually you know, I'm, I'm chatting with people who might be like-minded or open-minded. Yeah. Uh, it's been very, very rare that someone has um, uh, been uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all right. I mean, experience. I try to to you know give information. Yeah. Um, basically, you know. Yeah, so. we don't think anything different. I mean, I wouldn't even have guessed. <laughs> Oh, definitely not. I, I think I'm gonna. Money doesn't look Jewish. <laughs> Spaceballs. She's so, a little spe something on Spaceballs there. You guys have a Facebook page, a website. Uh, is, you guys do Twitter, or anything like that that our listeners yeah. can follow. Uh, we, Jim has Jim Ballon is his Facebook. I have uh, Holly Witch is my Facebook. Um, we have the Broadsword comic. I think uh, Facebook because it took off the S, or is it? Does it have the S? It might have. Yeah, I think it does. Broadsword Comics for the Facebook, Broadsword Comic for Twitter. Okay. Um, okay. So plural um, for one, not for the other. <laughs> plural. Well, they, there wasn't enough like room in the. Yeah, didn't do all those. Oh, you get like Twitter. set back for characters. Yeah, you yeah. get so many characters. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I have an Instagram. I, I think it's Broadsword Comics in yep. the Instagram. Yeah, she, she posts a lot of cool shirts. You, you yeah. have a, a lot of cool shirts. That I'm wearing today. I, I have to take a photo. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> ready. Trying to use Google+. Plus. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm good with gadgets. I just had to figure out what to click. Yeah. Definitely. It seems like it actually turned out really rather well, though, with the, the Google thing. I mean, I know at first you're uh, having a little probably issue with uh, getting it started, but you know, other than that, it's I, I like I like Google Hangout. Google Hangout works really well for our guests and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I didn't realize we could do um, possibly now is my computer will actually answer my phone. So I um oh, did you want a bigger picture? <laughs> I um. <laughs> I, we could actually take phone calls now if we want to, so because my my, phone, my computer will answer my phone, which is really neat. So. Oh, that's cool. Uh, 
<laughs> Apple products are awesome. <laughs> expensive, but yes, awesome. Very Except expensive. for that bite that's out of it. Yeah, that <laughs> apple bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised I never put a worm in that apple. But <laughs> <laughs> that's somebody who's probably going to try to rip off the icon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, well, I, we're going to wrap the show up now. We're kind of hitting our limit. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you again for you guys yes, thank you. being yeah. our guests. Uh, it was great to meet you guys and talk to you. And uh, you froze up on me. Oh, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, hopefully we can have you back on again. We'll start promoting your magazine or your comic book, I mean. And, uh, you know, I really, really appreciate it. So uh, you guys yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna head out there and uh, see if I can dig up anything that uh, you guys have done. I mean, I literally dig up and I'll keep my eyes yeah. open and see if I can purchase a few of your uh, works. It's all over have. the Internet. We can order from the Internet. So Yeah, uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, if you can't find uh, the Broadsword Comics in your local comic book store, because I know sometimes they sell out, uh, you definitely come to our website. JimBallard.com. Cool. You know, All right. Yes, definitely. And before you leave, if you guys are interested in that, that film I was talking about, I, I'm more than happy to send you guys a copy of it. You guys can keep it and, and enjoy it if you want to. Yeah, sure. You should have it downloadable, too. So uh, this, I don't know if I actually do that or not. And you might be able to uh, talk to Tank. He might be able to set you up with that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. I actually would really like to send them an actual copy yeah. with the artwork and everything, yeah. too. So. For sure. Perfect. Well, well, again, thank you very much. You guys make sure you go out and check out uh, Broadsword Comics and the yes. Tarot and uh, the what's the other one, Holly, that you do? School bites. The what? School bites. School bites. School, yeah, school bites. School bites. That's it, yeah. And um, yeah, uh, I guess we're gonna pull out. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> Hold on one second. If you want to hear more of a Circle Jerk Up a Conversation, go to DixonSidershow.com. Follow and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Dixon Cider Show. And go to Stitcher Radio App and iTunes, subscribe, like us, leave a review, and if you don't like what you hear, shut, shut your, your fucking ears. ears. <laughs> All right. Let me stop here.